is up? How are you all doing? Happy Friday and welcome to The Wan Show. Wow. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. The big news is that NVIDIA is a bunch of assholes and they're hard to work with. We now have incontrovertible evidence of what I have been saying for quite some time. It might not be hot, but it sure is spicy. The Ethereum merger and moved proof of stake was successful. We'll be talking about that. What else we got? More NVIDIA news as there are several leaks, including 4090 leakage. Also, YouTube is increasing the number of ads. What? By a lot. Wait, oh, what? It's like a ton. Oh. Like, Wait, what? like five. Holy crap. Whoa. This could actually be a problem. Let's go ahead and roll that intro. Talk more about that later. Whoa, 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 whoa. Viscous Cree over on Floatplane says, slow news day. What are you even talking about? This is like... This is wild. <laughs> this is like the best news day we've had in a long time. Okay, let's finish that intro, okay? Let's, we'll be back here. You just need to take a take a seat. Take a seat, slow, viscous Cree. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah sit down. The show is brought to you today by Kyoxia, Squarespace, and Secret Lab. All right, why don't we jump right into the first topic here? Uh, the big one is obviously, yeah. uh, you know, I got to say, Jay was texting with me last night uh, because we were, hmm, how do I say this without uh, insulting some of the members of our community? Laughing over the fire? We were, no, 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 no. We were, well, what we were doing was we were um, chuckling to ourselves and each other about the number of people that legitimately thought that there was some kind of beef between us what? when I uploaded a short yesterday oh. um, critiquing Jay's dropping skills and showing that I could <laughs> drop our you screwdriver drop things better. <laughs> from higher and have it not break. Uh, there, there seemed to be some legitimately concerned members of the community to which I'm oh. really sorry. I, I guess I should have put a slash S. Um, I, I would say you are a more experienced dropper. Yeah, I mean, it, it isn't not, it's not untrue. Anyway, yeah. so we were, we were texting and he basically goes, yo, okay, I can't tell you anything, but Stay tuned. You're going to want... I think that the video going up on my channel tomorrow at noon is going to be WAN show worthy. Oh. To which I will say, Mr. Two Cents, you appear to have been correct. Let's talk about it. EVGA has ended their partnership with NVIDIA and will be leaving the GPU business outright. Now, this is where things get really interesting. Uh, they have cited a lack of respect as a major factor in this decision, saying that it is not purely a profit or, well, I mean, yeah, it's not purely a money-driven decision, which might sound very surprising to, I think, people from the outside. A lot of businesses just don't operate that way, to be but, honest. But as someone who has dealt with the partner who I think has caused a lot of EVGA strife for a long time. This doesn't surprise me even a little bit. And clearly there was at least some financial factoring into the decision. Um, what we see from the numbers that have been reported here are that EVGA's revenue was about 78% graphics cards, about 20% power supplies, and it's worth noting here that that was at 300% higher margin than graphics cards Oof. and 2% everything else, which is, again, that's something that doesn't surprise me knowing what I know from being in the retail side that like, I couldn't figure out what, why EVGA even bothered to continue to make motherboards for years and years. I couldn't at really post 780i, 790i. <laughs> I couldn't figure out why they bothered to keep making motherboards because as far as I could tell, 
nobody was buying them. And I, I appear to have been correct. Um, they have committed to support remaining EVGA GPU warranties and have apparently withheld inventory to help replace and fulfill uh, cards as needed for people whose cards die. Uh, they expect to run out of RTX 30 series cards uh, in the span of the next few months here. They are staying in business. They're not planning to sell. And um, they haven't telegraphed any uh, near-term expansion into new categories. Now, this is really, really interesting. Um, hold on, where is it? Uh, where is it? Crap. Well, let's just run through. Let's just run through some more of the... No, no, I do want to... Yes, here we go. EVGA apparently has no plans to work with AMD or Intel. And this is, this is interesting. Because of the partnership, I don't want to betray them. And they, they're referring to uh, NVIDIA. And I've got notes in my doc here saying that this is kind of a confusing response. Sure but is. Actually, I am not that confused by that. And I can give you a little bit more detail about that. Let's get through some of the some of the facts. So really this was this was clearly a an at least partially emotional slash uh, principled decision. And here are some of the ways that EVGA has um, expressed frustration with NVIDIA's way of doing business. Uh, they've complained that they withhold pricing information until their public announcements, including the actual cost of the part. So as a partner, you would be expected to build boards, provide forecasts for your ordering, allocate, I mean, really, NVIDIA does all the allocation now, so, uh, but allocate your boards to your partners, like system integrators or retailers, all without knowing how much the product actually f***ing costs. And that's not new. That goes way back to when I was still at NCIX working in product management. Um, NVIDIA would withhold drivers until product launch. So we actually, EVGA actually ran into a pretty bad situation. Was it with the 3000 series launch or 2000 series launch where they had those boards that had... Um, uh, that had some kind of they had some kind of defect and they were they were popping under heavy load. I can't remember whether it was two thousand or three thousand series. I think it was two, but I could be wrong. But that's the kind of thing where if you actually had drivers to validate your product, you might be able to make sure that it's actually going to fucking work before you release it out into the wild. Um, Nvidia also strictly enforces uh, price ceilings on some of their cards, especially flagships, removing the ability of board partners to control their margins, making high-end boards very difficult to produce. And Jay said that Nvidia shut down cool experiments like dual GPUs and more creative designs. And uh, all of these oh, claims, yeah. all of these claims have been corroborated over the years many times by other board partners. I've known of dual GPU boards that have existed well past when Nvidia officially Officially supported them that were as far as working samples, but that were never able to see the light of day. Um, I've known of laptop, exotic laptop designs that never got to see the light of day, that were as far as all the engineering was done and only NVIDIA's blessing was needed to release this product. Um, but NVIDIA is, um, I don't think there's really any other way to put it. NVIDIA takes a very control freak approach to their everything. partnerships well yeah to everything um let's just see if there's a few other things that i want to kind of get through in terms of of just the facts and then we can get into some of some of my own thoughts on this um let's see oh this is good uh what happens to the employees who work on evga's video cards this is a really important question to answer their ceo claims that no employees will be laid off uh, but restructuring will occur. Um, hey, if there's anyone super technical over at EVGA who wants to maybe join the media side, um, you know, you wouldn't be the first refugee who ended up over here, and we'd love to we'd love to uh, have you share your expertise with with the community. Kind of keep 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 working, keep the other GPU makers honest, right? Uh, so yeah, my inbox is open. I think you guys uh, you guys know how to get in touch with me. Uh, you will have to come to Canada. It's not that bad. 
Uh, so some staff may leave now that their projects have been killed. It's that's, definitely a thing. That's that's sure. almost certainly going to happen. Uh, let's so let's let's break down let's break down some of these things. The withholding pricing thing. Yeah. So I experienced this on the other side of the of of the equation. So you've got your Nvidia, you've got your board partners, you've got your retailers, right? So I saw it on the retail side. I they'd go, oh. what's your forecast for uh, you know, GTX 580? And I'd go, well, what's the pricing? And they'd go, well, what do you need that for? <laughs> it's Nvidia. It'll sell. And I'm sitting here going, what do I need that for? Well, because I'm trying to because I'm trying to run a fucking business here <laughs> because I have to manage my cash flow because I, I need to know, is this a hot launch? Is this an 8800 GT or is this a freaking, you know, what, 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 OK, I'll try to think of something like super crappy GTX 285. Like, which one is it? Is it good or does it suck? I don't know how many I need unless I know what the performance is supposed to be like and I know what the pricing is, you numpties. And so I have absolutely had that same experience. And then over the years, after we started Linus Media Group, I think Luke and I both experienced firsthand the frustration of NVIDIA just oh, geez. keeping partners in the dark so that they could take all of the fanfare, keep all of the excitement, for themselves i think really i forget i always forget what board it was but there was there was a gpu launch do you remember which one was it 1080 it happened to me more than once but 1080 was pretty egregious that was like pinnacle yeah they basically flew in press from all around the world to come sit in the audience while they announced everything gave us absolutely no time to produce content that could go up at least simultaneously with their announcement. They had a concert after the announcement, which like sounds cool, except you're stuck at this place that's very far away from the hotel. You have nowhere really to shoot. And the one place that you can shoot at has music that you can't have in your video blaring really, really, really loudly in the background. So you actually couldn't really produce any content on site. If I remember correctly, our video is like in the basement and I'm like standing in front of a bunch of folded chairs and Kyle's video is like out on the street. And I think Paul's video is also out on the street. Like everyone's just like, what do we do? <laughs> it, was, it was ridiculous. NVIDIA's utter disdain for their partners um, is basically universal. Uh, whether you are uh, an, an OEM, like an engineering firm, whether you're media, whether you're a retailer, SI, um, I, I think that I'm not the only one who has felt many times like a necessary evil. And I think we it's it's the exact same attitude. I was so, I felt like I needed to be so careful calling out NVIDIA during that hardware unboxed scandal where NVIDIA not just threatened, well, not even threatened, not just cut off hardware unboxed from receiving review samples because it wasn't that simple. What they did was they put pressure on an independent media outlet to change the uh, to change their narrative uh, tune to change their narrative angle in order to be more favorable to Nvidia's marketing goals, and it was this complete and utter misunderstanding and lack of respect for the role of media that I think was one of the most insightful windows into NVIDIA's attitude towards the rest of the industry uh, that we had gotten almost ever up until that point and uh, maybe ever up until now. I think finally, finally seeing one of their partners just drop them and then come out and talk about this is unprecedented. Um, and I, I, I want to talk in a little bit more detail. You know how on previous uh, previous WAN show I had said that I had actually gone as far as to skeleton out a video called like Nvidia who hurt you or like Nvidia why are you mad or something like that where I where I basically would I went around I actually I already did the like the investigative work uh, calling up Nvidia partners um, talking to them about their experiences dealing with Nvidia where I I kind of just I wanted to do sort of like a like a like a like a, an appeal, you know, to to maybe the softer side of the leadership there to just, you know, treat people with respect, be a be a better partner, share share a little bit of the success, not well, not just a little bit, share share the big success, you know, like 
Um, so why don't we all support each other instead of being so focused on trying to take the most for yourself? And I don't know if you remember this, but I wasn't able to find that because I, I thought it was a Google Doc. So I did track it down today. Oh, cool. And uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up. This is this is completely unaltered from uh, from when I from when I wrote it up. Uh, and so you guys can you guys are gonna get a little bit more insight into my personal thoughts maybe than I would have necessarily left in the in the script. Um, and you'll get a little bit of insight into my writing process, but uh, Typos and all. this is it. So these are the titles I had, um, I had here. NVIDIA, why are you scared? Why is NVIDIA a bully? Was kind of what I had in mind. The slogan was, did your parents not praise you enough? That probably would have gotten revised. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh boy. I mean, for real though, the way they act, it's, <laughs> it's classic bully syndrome though. It yeah. really is. So here's what here's what I I had kind of oh I haven't talked about this publicly. Uh one moment please. I can't read it from here. I the you know what? you showed your screen I was like oh no. Mhm. Mm let's uh let's go through some of the other stuff. Um one of EVGA's frustrations is that Nvidia has been undercutting their ability to move their product by offering Founders Edition cards at a lower price. And we've talked about this a fair bit, how Nvidia is at an unfair advantage with their Founders Edition yeah. cards because they have drivers to validate the product. They have access to the GPUs at a much lower level and way earlier than their so-called partners do. They have extra margin because they don't have to worry about, well, the margin of their partner and selling the the chip. Usually it comes as a set of chip and memory. So they just keep whatever margin their partner would have made so they can actually undercut their partners in that way. Um, and the, the way that it's outlined here is actually exactly that. EVGA needs to buy chips from NVIDIA, but NVIDIA can make the chip and the board uh, for their own cards. And if EVGAs doesn't sell, NVIDIA doesn't care because they've already profited on the sale of the GPU to EVGA. Now, this is not quite true, what's in our notes here. So I added a comment that elaborates on this a little bit. NVIDIA does care a little about their partners. AIBs going out of business outright has a negative impact on the NVIDIA brand, which is why NVIDIA cares. Because now that NVIDIA controls everything down to the box art, I mean, going back even further, you used to be able to download drivers from an AIB website. Yep. Your, your Chaintech GeForce card, you would download drivers from Chaintech.tw or whatever. Not, not so much anymore. It's an NVIDIA card in an NVIDIA box, and you go to the NVIDIA website. Um, so now that they have taken such, a, such control over the way that the products are branded and presented to the customer, well... The customer perception then is that their NVIDIA GPU suddenly has no warranty, which hurts the perceived stability of NVIDIA as a company, which is why they don't actually want their partners going out of business outright. Uh, so their control freak approach then forces them to keep their partners on just enough life support that they don't completely abandon the GPU business, or at least that's what they've been trying to do. Looks like it's not working. Um, as for why they have so many add-in board partners or AIBs at all, well, in the old days, I think the main benefit of the strategy was that you could take up more retail shelf space by having more variants of cards from supposedly different GPU manufacturers with different box art, but all with the same silicon. Yeah. And so there was there was this explosion in AIB partners, both for NVIDIA and for ATI, back in like the early 2000s, where you could go to you could go to a store and there would be there would be a chain tech one. I think ABIT even got into GPUs at one point, like a ASUS MSI. There back. was a lot. There, I, there yeah. were a ton. There were a ton, right? And the the add and board partners also acted as a meat shield. So while Nvidia might not be able to have like like a, a horrible you know five percent margin business on their balance sheet as a publicly traded company, and they would be they would be encouraged to to ditch that. 
um, especially with the support costs that come along with covering. I mean, back then, lifetime warranties were not just EVGA, BFG and EVGA. Oh, yeah. Both offered lifetime warranties on GeForce GPUs. Um, so it was a pretty cool time to be a customer. <laughs> yeah, it sure was. So NVIDIA could use their board partners as this like shield to keep this low margin, high risk business away from their books so that their shareholders wouldn't look at it and go, well, what in the heck are you guys doing over there? Um, so it was highly beneficial to have a ton of these AIBs. It also allowed someone like an NVIDIA or an ATI to artificially make it seem as though there was a ton of choice in the market. So your diamond GPU might come with Tomb Raider and your MSI version of that same GPU might come with SimCity something sure. and like yeah. some other some other game. So, and I shouldn't even say the perception of choice. It wasn't an illusion. There was actual choice depending on the game bundles you wanted. I mean, even game bundles, there's no there, there there's no variation between GPU makers because I can tell you this, game bundles do cost the GPU manufacturer's money to run, far less than the retail sticker price of the game, but more than zero dollars. And it got to the point where there was not enough margin left in selling these products for the board uh, for the board manufacturers for them to differentiate based on it. So they would only get any game bundles that were passed down from the parent uh, chip manufacturer. <sighs> it's been it's been a it's been a time. Um, Still quite the bold move. I I find the all the employees are going to be taken care of thing to be very interesting. Well, um, it is it is such a huge percentage of their revenue. That's also not profit. Yes. And at that tiny percentage of of margin, uh, I do wonder how much of their business this actually does hit. Um, it's not like they're losing 80 percent of their profit. No, but they're not. Still. But it looks like it's going to be about mm, half of it, at least. I also have to assume there's a lot of very specialized employees. And if they're completely departing GPUs like. <sighs> I mean, maybe they go hard yeah, they into motherboards, but it's never worked for them. So I just don't no. really know what that would look like. Yeah. It's it's hard to compete. Uh, EVGA does have actual manufacturing capacity, though. So that's, that's something. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's one of the things that um, EVGA seems pretty, pretty frustrated about. Apparently, EVGA was doing uh, manufacturing for Founders, Editions car Founders Edition cards, and that is no longer the case. NVIDIA has been, wait, what's it? EVGA used to be the primary manufacturer, oh, of NVIDIA reference cards, until NVIDIA began selling their own Founders Edition cards with the 10 series GPUs. Um, the move towards NVIDIA, and this is gonna be interesting. I saw someone talking in the chat earlier about some of the, some of the bad takes or like wrong takes that I've had over the years. Uh, apparently I said NVIDIA, uh, Nintendo wouldn't sell hardware within eight years, like on an ancient WAN show or something like that. Um, this is one that I think I probably got right. Back when NVIDIA first started selling first party, like NVIDIA branded GPUs, I'm pretty sure I called it that the writing was on the wall. And that was 12 years ago when, and it was a Best Buy exclusive. And really, are you not going to redirect for me? Here we go. It was Best Buy exclusive and it was only mid-range cards. And I can explain to you exactly why this is. Because... NVIDIA, excuse me, would have plausible deniability. Well, it's, it's about the partnership with Best Buy. We're just, uh, you know, making sure that there's like a consistent whatever, blah, 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 blah. Best Buy asked us to, you know, and don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's just like the entry level GeForce cards. It's it's not like, you know, the the high, the high big ticket items. What, what's, what's that whole thing? You, you push people right into the point to where they start protesting and then you stop. So it seems like there's nothing to protest for, and then you push again. Yes. And you just keep going. And you bit keep going by bit. bit by bit. And then eventually EVGA quits. <laughs> literally, literally a one decade game plan. That's uh yeah. that's how they roll. Um, all right. So I already talked about the them caring a little bit. Um Okay. Uh yes. Okay. So let's talk about that quote where EVGA doesn't have plans, apparently, to work with AMD or Intel on GPUs, citing, because of the partnership, I don't want to betray them. That is not confusing in the least. NVIDIA never forgives. NVIDIA never forgets. After what happened with the hardware unboxed scandal, 
the second we went to bat for hardware unboxed, NVIDIA was never going to work with us again. They'll send cards because they can't afford the bad PR of not supporting independent media. They've seen that now, so that's good. At least they learned that much. But they never forgive and they never forget. And XFX is the only example we need to point to to demonstrate that. XFX used to be NVIDIA exclusive and they made the switch to Team Red. Man, must have been over 10 years ago now. And I can tell you that everyone knew at the time that they would never sell another NVIDIA GPU, not ever. Uh, and it's just, it's just the way they are. So what EVGA has done here is they've been, I mean, now that they've spoken out about NVIDIA, I mean, realistically, I don't, I don't see them ever selling an NVIDIA GPU again anyway, but at least they haven't poisoned the well so much as to, as to, um, as they would if they were to sell uh, like a Radeon GPU. So what this does in my mind is it leaves maybe not a foot, but at least one toe in that door in case they ever want to open it back up and start selling GPUs again. Um, and that wouldn't, it wouldn't even necessarily just be like under the brand name EVGA. Um, that like it wouldn't just be the EVGA brand that would be a problem. I suspect that anyone who was responsible for making that decision to sell Radeon GPUs, even if they if formed a new company, I, I I just I don't see them I don't see them getting an Nvidia board partner. Um, I I don't know what it would be a certification a license agreement board partner agreement. Um, Jive Turkey asks, I wonder if Nvidia is nicer to someone like Asus. I couldn't say for sure, but what I can say is that they're not nice to anyone. So make of that what you will. So let's go back to let's go back to my doc here. Actually, let me just make sure I don't have any identifying information for any of my sources here because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. You know what I mean? Okay, yep, 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 yep. Um, okay, I think I'm in pretty good shape here. Sorry, guys, I just need a sec. Oh, wow, I actually wrote a lot more of this than I thought. Did I ever, did I ever read this to you guys? I don't, I don't know. Man, I went really hard. No wonder I didn't release this <laughs> this is really long holy snakies okay um, just okay holy crap it's still going oh man okay oh man oh man i've got this whole thing here oh this is great examples of nvidia being a bad guy uh yeah okay well, I don't have any personally identifying information, so let's go through and let's talk about this a little bit. This is a video that I had originally slated for shortly after April of 2021. And um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, while the news of EVGA terminating their partnership with NVIDIA um, is uh, surprising to me, it is not shocking. So I, 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 I'm not... I could have seen some kind of breakdown in relationship coming. I just didn't know it was happening now. So um, I guess this is a good opportunity for us to talk about the the aftermath of the hardware unboxed situation. I heard through the grapevine from more than one industry contact that NVIDIA was trying to put pressure on our partners to reduce their advertising spending with us. Really? Yeah, and it's it's the kind of thing that, you know, I can't I can't verify. You know, no one from Nvidia is going to tell me that, obviously, right? Um and I have no way of knowing if it's true because maybe Nvidia didn't realize this at the time, but at their peak, they were like 0.5 of a percent of our annual revenue. So I would never have even noticed it anyway. And the the funniest part about that was one of the people who told me, like, 
seemed really nervous about it. Like they were going to be the bearer of extremely bad news or something like that. I was like, I was like my brother in Christ, let me tell you. Um, Not only that, but there's like other spots we could have filled that with very easily. So (laughs) I have spent my entire career in media trying to reduce my reliance on industry titans like NVIDIA. I do not need their money. I'll work with them if it makes sense. I'm happy to work with them because let's face it, they make products that people love, that I love, right? But do not kid yourself. I will survive without them just fine. Um, so so anyway, that was, that was pretty funny. Um, and, you know, I guess what, so what I, what I had to say about that was, you know, why talk to me directly about a problem, explain your viewpoint and resolve our differences like adults that mutually respect each other when you can just take someone like me who put a toe out of line and make an example out of me. Not that it worked, but uh, they certainly tried. Um, you know, I, I had, I noted that it's, it's noteworthy that a mere six months ago, I was one of only two influencers tapped to premiere the 8K gaming capabilities of the RTX 3090, making the message clear. No one is safe from retaliation. Um, and remember, guys, this is a message they weren't sending out to the public. This is a message they were sending out to partners. And it's possible that they knew that they were not going to be able to have any impact on my business because, I mean, they're the cheapest that I think I've ever had the pleasure of dealing with in this entire industry. Like, it is what it is, right? So maybe they knew. But at the very least, what they were doing was they were showing their partners how anyone could be cut off, no matter how, you know, golden boy uh, favorited they might have seemed just a few months ago. Um... I, I had in here that I wanted to proactively address any perception that I'm just butthurt about being cut off from the NVIDIA gravy train. Um, NVIDIA, yeah, okay. I I had that they were, <laughs> this is how I put it in the doc. I hadn't checked the exact numbers. It was point whatever percent of our revenue uh, directly. And as a pass-through from partners, it was point something percent. <laughs> like they might feel like they're putting the squeeze on us to bring us back to the negotiating table, but uh, I put that I felt they were overestimating their bargaining position. Um, now, this was, this was this is the kind of the big turning point in the script. For years, I've seen some of their moves as a kind of 4D chess, but looking back with the new context I have, their behavior might have just been emotional and reactive rather than calculated and carefully planned. And seeing them lose such an important partner as EVGA kind of reinforces that for me. EVGA, and I've been saying it for a long time, was was kind of a, a bit of a golden boy. And I think NVIDIA even thought that, considering they had to make their orish, uh, original reference cards back in the day. Like, that's a that's a pretty big, pretty important partner to lose. Um, and hopefully they get the message. Um, yeah. And then I, I pointed out that the hardware and box situation is such a perfect example of this. They did something objectively awful. They got predictably called out on it. Um, so I was sitting here going, nah, dog, there's like, there's a master plan here. But then instead of the master plan becoming clear, uh, they walked it back in public. And then based on what I've been able to gather since, I, I've never been able to understand what that master plan might have been. I don't even think they still understand that what they did was wrong. They just, you know, touched something hot and got burned. And they're like, okay, well, I guess I won't touch that again but I don't think they've made the connection that fire hot, you know? Do you kind of get what I mean? Um, because here they were putting pressure on media, a media outlet again over wrong think. And it's like, you guys, you guys, you guys still don't get it, do you? Like it actually, that isn't going to work. That is not how this works. Um, the only way that it was smarter was by being sneakier, by not talking to me directly. But I, even that's not that smart because this is the thing you guys got to understand. Hardware industry is so small. It's so small. And it's not just small in terms of the number of people working in it. It's small in terms of the relationships, the connections. It's inbred, right? Over a span, uh, over the span of the 15 plus years that I've been in the industry, I've seen individual people 
who have represented, you know, half a dozen different companies. So you got to be really nice to people because you never know if you're going to be working shoulder to shoulder with them a year from now. But that's something that NVIDIA has never understood. Never understood. Um, I had in here that I should do uh, that I should do a really good explanation of MDF. So that's marketing development funds. Um, so it's NVIDIA's money to do with what they will. It's like a, an incentive program for you to sell more or like market NVIDIA products. And what it really is, though, is a form of control. It is necessary for the survival of much of the PC component and system ecosystem. And you need to look no further than Main Gear and Newegg's attempted IPOs. They just are, they're not profitable enough to go public. And the reason for it, well, part of the reason for it is that there's no margin in just selling the components. And the only thing that keeps them propped up is this marketing development funding that forces them to just push, 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 drive the price lower, keep the volume up so that you can keep getting these kickbacks so that you can just survive another quarter. Um, I, I had in here to talk about percentages of kickback that I'm aware of from my time at NCIX. I don't remember any of the percentages, unfortunately, so I, I wouldn't be able to, to do that. And then the dynamic is that they use MDF to rob you blind up front and then give your money that you need back to you for fulfilling certain duties that they dictate. Um, it's rough. <laughs> to be clear, I don't have a better solution because... Another problem in the computer industry is that it's like, I don't get it. Whether it's retailers or whether it's system integrators, there's this race to zero. If NVIDIA were to drop the price on RTX 3080 by $10, I guarantee you that the retailers wouldn't. And to be clear, I'm not promoting collusion. I'm not saying that they should collude. But what I will say is that they're not smart enough to make $10 for a couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> just wait and see how sales go. Maybe, maybe we could just like make $10 for a change, <laughs> but they just won't do it. So in a way, MDF is the way to make sure that the little mom and pop shops who will do anything to get someone to walk through their door, including selling at a loss, can't just continue to trash the price of the product and take all the margin out of it for everyone. So yeah, I don't, I don't have a better solution, but it is a toxic power dynamic. Um, what else? Oh yeah, so I had the whole bit where um, where ARM partners were uh, upset about the potential NVIDIA acquisition of ARM. And then, you know, my point there was maybe if you guys, maybe if you guys weren't such a-holes, this wouldn't happen. Did you ever think of that? Uh, that's no longer in the news, <laughs> so that's not really a relevant one, but... Jeez. Uh, I have, I have a point here. I thought long and hard about whether to make this video. I'm already on Apple's list and alienating industry titans isn't the best path to a long and successful career. Um, but hey, whatever, right? Uh, everyone that I talked to, this was really interesting, supported the basic idea of doing this video, but would not go on the record for me. That was one of the big I problems that, yeah. that ultimately canned this concept was that nobody would come out and say, yeah, they're awful. Uh, Project Greenlight is awful. Um, the the way that they the way that they handled G Sync certification is awful. Like they just they just wouldn't do it. Ah, <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's I like a... DVGA cards. I'm sad. Yep. So I had to do a recap of what happened with Hardware Unbox. Um. Yeah, so here's where we actually got into the scripted part of the video. I get it, only the paranoid survive, but there's a limit. You can't and probably don't even want to win 100% market share. So why do you keep tightening your grip? Let's not pretend this pressure on the media through hardware and box was somehow an isolated incident. The difference is that most of NVIDIA's pressure gets applied to partners behind the scenes who are much more susceptible to damage to their business than an independent media outlet who is going to be more and more funded directly by their viewers. And then I had massive shout out, by the way, to my float plane peeps and my lttstore.com shoppers. Let's go. So it comes across petty, emotional, and scared. Are you really so insecure that when you're in a position of unassailable power, you need to put down everyone else who thrives in your ecosystem to reassure yourself you're the top dog? You're top dog. There. I said it. Can we put it behind us now? 
Is it an insurance policy? So next time you release a GTX 480, you'll be able to force manufacturing partners to market it under their high-performance sub-brands. Don't think we've forgotten GPP. Do you want to suppress independent evaluation of your products? Well, guess what? When and if that happens, we're all going to immediately break ranks because the only thing you'll have over us is money. And the second your partners realize that selling GeForce and G-Sync isn't the most profitable move anymore, they're going to turn tail and run because you are f***ing assholes. So here's an idea. How about treating your partners with respect and dignity? You don't have to fight over every scrap anymore. There is lots to go around. The craziest part of all of this is that sometimes NVIDIA is super cool. We praised the transparency of their move to release their internal tools for evaluating total board power for graphics cards and click to photon latency to the public. What was really telling about that was that it projected confidence. NVIDIA went out and equipped a big cross-section of independent media with the tools they needed to hold graphics card manufacturers, including NVIDIA, accountable for meeting the specs they advertised and delivering the best gaming experience beyond FPS. Obviously, from my experience with NVIDIA, I know that I wouldn't have received any such tool if they weren't confident that it would show that NVIDIA is king. But NVIDIA has tons of smart people working there who know that that may not always be the case, and if they give us these tools now, it could reflect poorly on them at some point in the future. But they did it anyway, because smart people at NVIDIA know that a strong, well-informed independent media results in more educated customers, which pushes their competition to do better, which pushes them to do better. The smart people at NVIDIA want feedback about what they can do to make their products better. I know for a fact there are suits there who wish it wasn't this way, and that NVIDIA could just control all the messaging to consumers directly. But like it or not, we're the conduit. We're the ones who look at our audience feedback all day, every day. We're the ones who have that relationship, not you. And I guess I should thank you for this latest move, because if you keep going about your business this way, consumers will never trust you, and they will always need us. Um, now, I, I had a little not finished paragraph here where I said, uh, there are problems with this model. Um, personal biases, echo chambers, uh, lack of control, potential for corruption. But as long as we're engaging in good faith and with mutual respect, it's served us well for 20 plus years and can serve us for another 20. So with that in mind, NVIDIA, I think it's time to reflect on your pride. I'm not saying not to feel proud. If I wore a green name badge, I'd be proud of everything the team accomplished there too. It's mind blowing. I'm just talking about this inability to take constructive criticism. Um, yeah, so there's there's a little bit more, but I just I think that's I think that's the main point. It's a shame. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be this way. Yeah. I don't have a ton to add except that Nvidia was extremely extremely frustrating to work with when I was still doing coverage of things. Um one of my favorite things to do ever was to go on the road and cover things do shows, do stuff like that. Yep. And it was always actually insanely frustrating to do any NVIDIA event because every time I'd know that like there was going to be a major problem. And like I used to do basically every road show with Brandon. And every time that uh, like Brandon and I would meet before to talk about like what we we're going to do, I'd be like, it's another NVIDIA event. So let's make sure we're ready to shoot in any possible condition because they're going to actively try to make it so it's hard for us so we got to like be ready to fight to be able to make a video like it was it was actually crazy you'd you'd work with anyone else and they'd they'd be like tripping over themselves trying to make sure that you can make the video properly and to be clear uh AMD and Intel have both had their fair share of completely stupid events that have made it very difficult to cover them you always took those i never but yeah NVIDIA had a special way of having a little FU yeah. buried in the difficulty. It felt very intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's all I can really add. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, our, our last discussion question here is, what's next for EVGA? I don't know. It makes me concerned. Could, because... could they be the next Antec? Um. People have pointed out XFX as well. Um, I hope they do well. I've talked to Wancho a bunch of times that I really like NVIDIA because of some some real bro moves they did in the past, way before I was doing this. Um, and they seem to have been able to maintain their high quality and trustworthiness status basically this whole time. Yeah, let's acknowledge some good things. NVIDIA yeah. provides 
in the tech industry a nearly unprecedented level of legacy product support. Yep. Like they are still providing security drivers for Kepler. For Kepler. That's actually pretty crazy. I mean, imagine if your imagine if your Android phone maker was actually giving you software updates for that long. I mean, there'd be less e-waste in the world. It's a good thing. Not they, like they've been doing well with Linux, but they do good things. Well, look, I told, we're focusing on good things. I was trying Luke. to give EVGA good things. You stepped in and started giving Nvidia good things. This was not. This was not a. Oh well, EVGA. I mean, it's no secret that they do good things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, Nvidia does too. It's just. They deserve this, but I hope in doing this, EVJ doesn't end up cleaving their own employees and also themselves. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, we've got people talking about how they're going to miss EVGA. Hey, dude, it's Mike in Twitch chat. It says EVGA replaced a like five generation old card for me once with zero hassle. And that's the problem. That's why EVGA needs out of this business because their brand reputation is that they want to be bros like that and they can't afford it. Because NVIDIA dictates how much their products cost, how much they're allowed to sell them for, what they're allowed to innovate on. Oh. And they're sitting here going, well, how are we supposed to maintain our reputation for supporting these products properly when we can't even make any f***ing money? Yeah. I understand the confusion now, by the way. Apparently, I accidentally said NVIDIA, but I meant I was talking about EVGA. Got I probably it. just read it at the same time. But yeah, EVGA is, has always been great. So I... I hope they figure it out. I hope they can stay around. Motherboards is a scary business. It, there's already very established partners that I think people default to. And motherboards aren't a super like sexy product. Yeah. So I think if they work and you bought that brand before, that's all you really needed to do. Um, so yeah. here's a tough question. Who do you go to for I don't your next GPU then? Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. There's no one with a spotless reputation at this point. To support their kind of argument, though, if you look at my computer right now, do you remember what's in it? Do you have Founders Edition cards? You picked it. Yeah, okay. So GG, NVIDIA wins. They just sell Founders Edition cards if and I was, take the If margin? I was still buying cards because of what EVGA has done for me directly in the past. I'm not saying that other people should do this, but what EVGA has done directly for me in the past, I would buy another EVGA card. Um, but I didn't buy a card. I got one from work. All oh. right. So, yeah, I don't know. I really hope they make it because I like EVGA a lot. But, yeah. All right. Well, why don't we move on to our next topic? Let's talk about the... I have a, I have a bit of a curveball for a potential next topic. Oh. Or wait, can we even do it right now? Uh, no, never mind. Let's keep going. And I'll make sure that's good for the next one. <laughs> Chase has curated a whopping 38 merch messages for us so far. That's a few. Um, oh, okay. Well, one of them we just did. So Bennett S., I think we just addressed yours. Uh, we'll have to get through some of these, but we'll do them a little bit later. Let's get through a couple more tech topics first. The Ethereum merger and the move to proof of stake was successful. Um, it's the merging of Ethereum's main network with the layer that uses the new consensus mechanism. Basically, uh, proof of stake has been in a sort of trial period for a while until now, and this move has been actually quite a few years in the making. Proof of stake is good because it reduces the amount of computational work that's needed to verify blocks and transactions. Pools of Ethereum act as validators for transactions instead of solving complex math problems. To become a validator, it takes 32 ETH, Ether, I guess it would be, whatever, 32 Ethereum, Ethereum um, which is over 60,000 US dollars, though. So if the whole idea was, it's decentralized, man, it's out of the hands of the elites, man. Um, it's specifically in the hands of the elites, man. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Cool. Uh, people can pool resources, though, to become validators, similar oh. to mining pools. That's, I mean, that kind of solves that. Right? But you can no longer mine Ethereum. Proof of work does still work for Ethereum Classic, but it's not exactly profitable. Even with cheap power and efficient cards, mining on a GPU is now a very tough sell. Uh, the price has also dropped. Ethereum was above seventeen hundred US dollars just a couple days ago. It is now at fourteen hundred US dollars. It's almost like people just want to like mine on their GPUs for sport, and it was never about it actually being um, practical to buy things with Ethereum. 
Uh, Bitcoin has also dropped from almost twenty-three thousand U.S. dollars. It had recovered a little bit, down to nineteen and a half today. Whew. Okay. Wow. Vitalik, the Ethereum creator, says this should reduce global power consumption by 0.2%. Can that possibly be right? Because that is so much bananas. Yeah. Woo. Okay. That's, uh, that's a bit. That's, that's, a, that's a bit. Oh. Um, the White House has put out a framework for regulating crypto in the US. It's they have a laptop? It's been in the works for about six months. Uh, the new guidelines are meant to position the country as a leader in governance of the digital, digital assets ecosystem at home and abroad, and the Treasury will complete an illicit finance risk assessment on decentralized finance by the end of February 2023. The framework points out that a stable, USD-based coin could promote financial inclusion and equity by enabling access for a broad set of consumers. So an official, an official cryptocurrency. It's, it's even more centralized, man. Um, to make stable coins safer, the administration says the Treasury will work with financial institutions to bolster their capacity to identify and mitigate cyber vulnerabilities by sharing info, promoting a wide range of data sets and analytical tools. What does that even mean? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> sure. <laughs> it means the government is getting involved in our crypto. Oh, boy. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, my gosh. That... Okay, this is from Ploof. Discussion question. What happens now? Will anything really change other than graphics cards being cheaper? Linus coin when? <laughs> no. The graphics cards becoming cheaper thing has been pretty crazy. Have you I looked know. into that at all? I know. Whoa. It's wild. Whoa. There is, uh, there is. We ain't filming Scrapyard Wars right now, but it might be the time for you to do your own. Yeah. Oh, uh, getting into our next topic then, there were some leaks from NVIDIA. Uh, next Tuesday, they are expected to announce their upcoming generation of GPUs at their GeForce Beyond event. And in classic tech fashion, it's all spoiled. So keeping everything to yourself, yeah, that works really well, you guys. Um, and there is a torrent of information on the upcoming GPUs. Oh, no, this wasn't the thing that I had wanted to talk about. There there had been rumors that uh, NVIDIA was... Um, was tightening supply of 30 series chips to keep prices from falling even further. Uh, I don't see where that was in the dock, but I thought it was I thought it was in here somewhere. Anywho, the newest leaks from Zotac, Galax, Gigabyte, and Lenovo. Is Lenovo going to be your EVGA replacement go-to? No. No, are you sure? Yep. You, you sure you don't want Lenovo pretty as sure. your EVGA replacement? Yeah, pretty sure. You, oh my God, Lenovo. <laughs> um, so here's the... <laughs> Leaked oh, Lenovo man. images here. I mean, it looks pretty chonky. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. Oh, a big He's boy. a big boy. <laughs> He's a big boy. Um, <laughs> Who's a big boy? You are. Uh, se seven heat pipes. Uh, gigabyte. Oh, the Gigabyte leaks shows some box art. Uh, here you go. Look at that. It looks like an NVIDIA card because they control what the box art can look like. Hey. Oh, what keeps happening? Stop. Okay. Sorry. I'm trying to I'm trying to show you guys here. RTX 4090. That font doesn't look very NVIDIA-y. Are they changing their official font? Because that looks stupid. You'd think if they're going to be control freaks about it, they'd at least settle on something Do a good. good. Job. Yeah. Typically, they're pretty good at, at branding. Yes. Um, there's some Zotac pictures over on Baidu. That's a woo woo. There's some there's some RTX, woo spicy. Um, so yeah, these will be if you want to keep supporting Nvidia, which realistically we're all going to because they like make really good GPUs. Then yeah, what if gaming has compiled the latest leaked specs? It looks like we're gonna be clocked over two gigahertz, almost wow two and a half gigahertz boost. That's wild. Sixteen thousand three hundred eighty four CUDA cores on the RTX forty ninety. Uh, 450 watts of total board power, and it's going to be built on TSMC's 5 nanometer process. Pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Notably, no cards have shown an exposed NVLink connector, meaning that perhaps SLI is finally dead for real. That's one of the first things people have been looking for for like years. S spot, spot the NVLink. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> yeah, can, can we still do like monster 3D mark runs? Yeah. Come on, can we still do it? <laughs> The answer is no. Our discussion questions here from Adam Sondergaard are, what excites you about the next generation of NVIDIA GPUs? They'll be faster. Yeah. 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 Big, big fast. 
There's still, there are technically still some games out there that need it. Okay. Yeah. Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Start, uh, you know, start. start hey, season. no, Cyberpunk's going to get cool. Because like, it? yeah, no, 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 no. They gave the community. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. What did they, Chase, do you know what's going on with this? Uh, so Cyberpunk has changed the, the way that they're going to release it. So I think they're having one main DLC come out. Instead of two, but it's like free for everyone, I think. And then the mod tools are like the tools they use to like basically make the game. Yeah. So, yeah. so now the will... community can actually yeah. make yeah. the game. So in a couple of years, the game will be like fucking amazing. Ooh. Yeah. There we hey, go. Oh, language, bro! sir. No, no. Producer goes away. Producer goes away. <laughs> Only I may fucking swear. <laughs> <laughs> I hit the button really late. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah. Once the modding community, if they do. Uh, yeah, then once, RTX 4090, do, Cyberpunk 2077, 2025. Yeah. Well, or, 2024, or maybe. Or later. Yeah. Or, it <laughs> yeah. Might, might take a while. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Take yeah. That's true. That's true. It's but the be, better the result. There's going to be a learning curve here. If people, like, really want to do it. Uh, speaking of better the result, uh, I have a thing. Oh. LTT store. Should we talk about that? The new one? We should talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh wait, that. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Yeah. This is the week. Oh my gosh. We deferred it one week. This is the week. Okay. We're here. Okay. Let's go to your screen. It's then? time to go. Uh, I mean, you can just go to it yourself if you want. It's lttstoretest.myshopify.com. This is a test site. Uh, we are looking for feedback. Do not email support. Don't. I, I don't know if I can even say this, but if you email support, I think they should just delete it. They will. And not respond. They will. They will not that, respond. Don't do that. Yeah, they have actual they have tickets to respond to. way too much stuff to do. Yep. There is a feedback form. It's in the announcement banner at the top of the site. You can click on it. It'll bring you to a Google form. It is not required that you fill out every section. So if you want to leave feedback on just part of the website, it's done like by page. So there's like homepage feedback, collections page feedback, product page feedback, whatever. Um, and you can you can fill out whatever you're interested in filling out on the form. You can poke around. This is uh, the new theme. This is what we want to launch onto the store. Are you going to show us around a little? Uh, I can. Yeah, I'll poke us. I'll poke us through some. Uh, while you do that, I have a pretty model. big announcement. Oh, speaking of the. Uh, the thing that's on screen right now, I think, is what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. Oh! Oh, my! So heavy! Oh, jeez. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. Finally here. Yeah. The big boy! The big boy is here! The big boy is on the store! Okay, Luke, go ahead. Go ahead. Show us around. I'm yeah, just gonna... I, I'm just I'm just cruising around while you do this. But yeah, unbox yeah, one it, of the big ones. It should be very familiar uh, to the um, to the to the experience that you have right now, but modernized a little bit, changed in a few different ways, improved in a few different ways. It's on a new uh, Shopify system. Uh, Conrad calls this the Dusk theme, but it's on a new Shopify. It's built modified from a new Shopify theme called Dawn. Uh, so it should come with more extensibility and more things that we can do to it in the future as well, which is good uh, because the theme that we were on was going to be problematic in that regard. Um, but yeah, it's here. I guess I could like mock check out something. Uh, why don't you show us some of the like cart? cool work that the team has Phew. done, like. Why don't you show us um, like some of the some of the neat like uh, filters and stuff? Filters and stuff, right? Okay, so there's a couple there's a couple new things, I guess. When you're looking through products, so let's go to water bottle. Now well, a couple instead new of things, they like redid the whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, instead of uh, scrolling all the way down the page for like a million years because the uh, the creator warehouse team lovingly wants to have 300,000 photos for every single product. Hey, look, now that's a benefit. You, <laughs> now you, there's just this thing on the side that you can scroll through here. You can see all these images that I'm flying through. I mean, it's not entirely on screen. Let me, there, there we go. I got to fit it over us. There we go. Now I can scroll through images over here. I can click on whichever ones I want and it'll enlarge it on the right hand side. Uh, and it looks all good. I like this part a lot. Uh, I'm trying to remember everything else that changed. I've been looking at this theme for so long that it's hard to remember what all changed. <laughs> um, darn. I know there was that. There's uh -huh. also, oh, right. The, okay, filters and stuff. So if I go to yeah. all products, 
there's filters on the side and this page scrolls forever so yeah. we'll just keep loading things that is also new yeah yeah we have a lot of products uh yeah this is a lot of things yeah um and yeah you can you can sort by different stuff if you change your like your main th- like if you go to clothing or gear it will change the available the uh, filters on the left hand side it um, was kind of wild going to the backpack pop-up which we did at our distribution center because on, I, I get a run rate report every week that shows like how much inventory we have but there's a big difference between seeing the number 1000 in like a, an on hand column in a spreadsheet and seeing a thousand water bottles. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, speaking of a thousand water bottles, we have a lot of these in Chungo. stock. To give you some idea of the scale of this magnificent beast of a 64 ounce water bottle, this is our 40 ounce, which is already a pretty chunky boy. And this is our 20, what is it, 22, whatever, like 20-ish ounce. This is the original LTT water bottle. It's like little tiny baby water bottle by comparison. It is insulated just like the uh, the 20, 22, I think it's 22, like the 22 and the, um, the 40 ounce. Um, uses the same cap, the same new cap style as the 40 ounce and is available in a ton of different colors. We have, this has been one of the most requested products for the store I'm very in the excited. last year. So hopefully you guys all, hopefully you guys all enjoy that. Oh all yeah, quick, that. quick note about the store page is that uh like payments are disabled if you do uh get through it's just going to be canceled you can't actually buy things on the test store um we will manually cancel them if you if you get through um i'm trying to remember other things that changed but there's a lot of like stylistic stuff um yeah okay i think there was some stuff in the checkout but yeah you guys should just check it out yourself if you're interested and leave feedback on the form yeah, we want to make it a better. We want to make it a better site. Oh yeah, this is different. Oh, this is uh, this is related to what is in your cart. Looks like we got some photo squish on the backpack. Well, yeah, Might probably want to look into address that. No, no, that's the new. That's the new small version of the backpack. Luke. Oh, you have micro pack. It's now? the it's the short boy version. The yeah, short that's, boy version. It's specifically made for me. Wide bag. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's for walking through the halls of the Kremlin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah exactly that song should play from the meme when you're on the page <laughs> guys stop leaving me feedback in float plane chat use the form please <laughs> yeah float plane chat is not manageable to to compile feedback <laughs> yeah thank you though okay. we appreciate the effort yeah in uh, other ltt store news uh is it just the water bottle or is there something else going on oh we have no we have uh two new colors of the ah, waffle shirt yes this is one of them uh, i believe this is yeah this is olive and there's also wine um, and if you buy ABCs of gaming, you get a free dad hat. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah, because you're a dad. So you need a hat yep. and a book to read to your child. Yep. Just Hold add on a both second. to cart and the discount applies automatically. So you don't need to actually type anything in. Okay. So here are our colors for the waffle long sleeve. We've got olive. What a nice picture. Great yeah. work, David. Yeah. We've got charcoal. We've got wine. And we have ultramarine, four different colors of the waffle. It's a popular one. People, people love the waffle. So now we have even more coolers. I like. I like. This is probably the only time you're gonna hear me say this, but I like wine. You like the wine color? Yeah. Looks nice. Looks sharp. Looks um, very like warm and Christmassy, and we're slowly transitioning into those seasons. We're not that's quite true. there, but getting there. All right. You know what? Let's do our sponsors, and then I want to talk about uh, how I was significantly injured fighting Dennis this week. Yeah. I also have an update on the stray cats that I found in my yard. Ah, good. Yeah, so I'll I'll, I'll run you through that. But uh, the show is brought to you today by... Oh, Keoxia! Wait, Chase, do you know how to put the thing there? Chase doesn't know that he has to do anything. You do know how to do the thing? Nice. Nice! Kioxia CM7 series NVMe SSD is optimized for the needs of high performance and highly efficient servers. It's PCIe Gen 5 NVMe 2.0 and has the capability to support U.3 systems. 
The CAM7 series is available in both the new EDSFF E3.S and 2.5 inch form factors up to a massive 30 terabytes per drive. Per drive! 30 terabytes! Won't be cheap. On top of that, it's rated at read speeds of almost 14 gigabytes per second. That is not a typo. That is not gigabits. That is gigabytes per second. Per drive. You're That's not registering this, are you? That's a ton. 14 gigabytes per second. I'm not going to lie, I was reading something. I thought you said three, and I was still like, oh. 14. That's a ton. So you can learn more about their CM7 Series Enterprise NVMe SSDs at Keoxia's link down below. That's lmg.gg slash Keoxia CM7. The show is also brought to you by Squawara Space. Squarespace. If you want to build a brand online, you need a website. Um, <laughs> but this is great. We've got new talking points. These are funny. But I just learned how to turn on the little flashlight on my phone. How am I going to build a whole website? <laughs> well, <laughs> Squarespace can help you. Squarespace is your one-stop, no-frills, all-in-one platform for expanding your presence on the internet. It lets you build a beautiful website, engage with the audience, and sell everything and anything from products to content without needing to attend the uh, TechWorts School of Tech Witchcraft and Wizardry. We love Squarespace so much. We use it here for LinusMediaGroup.com, and oh no, oh no, sad chase. They took LTXExpo.com out of the talking points because we haven't done one in... Three years. <laughs> Wrecked. <laughs> um, we, we, we do use it for that website, though. It really is really easy to use. And while that website might have been sitting there dormant, we don't have to worry about any security updates or any updates. Squarespace just takes care of all of it for us. They've got a variety of themes and customiza customization options to fit your needs. Uh, you can maximize your visibility with their suite of integrated SEO features, and they offer analytics insights to help you optimize your performance. So get started and go to squarespace.com forward slash LTT to get 10% off your first purchase. The show is also brought to you by Secret Lab. Secret Lab chairs are engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours, whether you're at work or at play. Their Titan Evo 2022 series chair offers four-way lumbar support, comes with a magnetic memory foam head pillow, and is offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Nappa leather. With up to a five-year extended warranty and a 49-day return policy, guys, don't take my word for it. Try it. Try Secret Lab. I can have any chair I want, and I went Secret Lab for home. They're really, really good chairs. Um, so go to the link in the description and check out Secret Lab today. All right. And to be fair, we did make an update to the LTX website recently. Yeah, Very small say, one. You can go to it right now. Sorry you haven't been able to Basically. go to LTX in three years. <laughs> yeah. Now, I saw you working on a floor plan. Is yeah. that an LTX floor plan? That is an LTX floor plan. We, I, I think this. You've already mentioned this, or someone mentioned this. We we have purchased. Oh, there's a. Uh, there's we've a secured logo. the dates for LTX, uh, 2023. Oh, have we? Yeah. I Look don't have at the that. Dates yet though. Look at that. Wait, we secured the dates, but you don't have the dates. Well, I don't want to tell the dates because I don't remember them exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I certainly don't remember them. Wait, aren't you the organizer? Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're turning off the producer cam again. That's awesome. This guy, I want, I want Bell back. Where's my, where's my crowned and caped Jake Bellavance? That's pretty funny though. Uh, okay. So, I got injured at work this week. You did. I watched it. Um, I'm not going to spoil the result for you. But all I can say, if you guys haven't been, if you guys haven't been keeping up, uh, let's just go to twitter.com slash, is it just? I've channel? had so much fun uh, over the last little bit saying like, Dennis is fighting Linus in the way that, uh, what's his name? Is it Tank? In, in the Matrix? It says Morpheus is fighting Neo. I've been trying to. I've no one's ever gotten the reference because how how could you? Did not get the but reference. But I've been I've been really enjoying that. Um. Uh, Redacted retracted. By the way, asks if the Backstreet Boys are playing in Vancouver next year. I don't know, but I saw them this year, so I have I have ticked that off my bucket Solid. list. Um, and for those of you who don't get that reference, I missed 
my Backstreet Boys concert twice. I had tickets and missed it twice because LTX absolutely had to be on the exact same day that they were playing in Vancouver. Uh, so let's go over to my screen here for a second. For those of you out of the loop, Dennis has spent uh, the better part of this month being trained in a combination of Taekwondo and kickboxing. And Krav Maga. And what? And Krav Maga. I don't even know what that is. Oh. What is it? Well, I don't, he didn't use it, so. Is it really like matter. dangerous MMA stuff or what? Uh, I think you'd probably consider it that. Like people were like attacking him with knives and he had to defend himself. Oh, sure. Okay. Fake ones, but yeah. Uh, so Dennis has been uh, getting, getting trained up in preparation for a fight with yours truly. Uh, that fight took place on Wednesday of this week. Yeah. And uh, Dennis's post post fight teaser is my feet hurt a lot from kicking Linus. Make sure you follow channel Super Fun for the video. Uh, my post fight teaser here. Hold on. He's actually got he's got a few more interesting videos on his personal Twitter. Uh, yeah. This this is this is something. So that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Okay. Not that he could have even used that. Yeah, he's but. been doing some practicing. Uh, this is super appropriate. Um, burning the eyes out of a picture of me for uh, for sparring practice. Anyway, uh, the point is the fight took place on Wednesday of this week. I'm not going to spoil the result. But my teaser is that whatever you think the outcome is, you will be surprised. Do you think that's fair to say? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. As for what happened to me, I have been limping around. I unfortunately aggravated a, an old existing injury in my left knee. I have a torn meniscus um, in my left knee that was mm, not so deep that I had to get surgery. When I took a few months off at the beginning of COVID lockdowns, it actually healed up well enough that I've been able to do anything that I, I would want to do for quite a while now. Um, but didn't heal enough that I don't have to worry about re-injuring it. And I did unfortunately re-injure it. How bad is it? Adding some tension and drama to the video for sure, because it happened about halfway and through the match. And to real life. Um, it's pretty bad. Oh. So when it was at its worst. Um, I don't oof, know. I'm going to be careful here. When it was at its worst, I could only go down about this far before it would give up. Yeah. When it was at its best, Do you need like support? up until no, 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 I'm good. I've got the table. When I when it was at its best, up until the match on Wednesday, I was able to go all the way down, heel to butt, and then lift myself up with just one leg. Now, should you do this? I can get to about here, wow. and that's it. So, oh boy, <laughs> it's. And that's with me icing it and doing basically nothing for the last two days. So, someone said, I think Linus won since he was a high rank in some martial art. So was Dennis. So was Dennis. Dennis actually, surprisingly, has a black belt in Taekwondo. Both of us trained they, they about 20 years ago. Fought in Taekwondo. And both of us have black belts, but like first degree black belts in our respective martial arts. So, and I mean, I guess we both got injured. So <laughs> it was it was interesting. I want to say so much, but I can't. Yeah, we'll it's, have to you, wait. You guys have to watch the video first. We'll have to wait. It is what it is. Do we know when it's coming out? I know there's like a lot of footage. Um, because of all of his training and stuff. I have no idea. Yeah. I think it's going to be a bit of a longer edit. Yeah. So, guys, I'm sorry to tease you. Ah, uh, but... I want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, well. It's, so, it's okay. It's okay. Should we talk about Google Ads? Oh. Do you even really want to? No. This is terrible. Yep. This is terrible. I'm going to give the Stray Cats update first. Okay. Um, We have taken them to the vet once. Okay. They have their first vaccination shots, but... Because they were near other stray cats up until the very moment we captured them and brought them inside, it's possible that they are positive for very horrible cat diseases mm. that um, they can't detect yet. 
So that vaccine they gave them is hoping that they don't already have like feline right. HIV or whatever. Yeah. But if they do, we can test them in a month, find that out. And if they don't have it, then we can give them their second booster, neuter them, and they're good to stay. But good it is to po- stay. But it is possible that they have just health problems that are that are going to be a problem. Because the thing is, from our point of view, um, Dash was here first, our our existing cat. I think you gotta you gotta treat it that way. And there's there's just there's no way that if this is going to be an uh, an un, unbearable burden on her that we can go forward. And I would say if they had an infectious disease that could put her health at risk, then that's just not how it's going to go. So right now we have them cordoned off downstairs. We have her cordoned off upstairs and they have no, they have no access to each other. How's Dash feeling about? She has been a little pissy <laughs> um, ever since we first brought them into the house. She's chilled out a little bit. What I'm hoping is that we can go real slow. So they'll just be in the house and then they'll be on the other side of a transparent plastic barrier. And then they'll be on the other side of like maybe a mesh barrier. And then they'll be in the same space. You do really similar things with birds. And we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what we'll see what happens. See if they kind of get over it. I think it might be fun for her. She's been getting a little fat. Um, so it might be nice for her to have someone have to play with. Play, yeah, for yep. sure. So we're just going to take it real slow. We're not going to we're not going to force it. And if she decides, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be just like the aloof, you know, alpha and I want nothing to do with you guys, then that's chill because I think these boys are very close to each other. Um and if she decides she wants to be, you know, super super into playing with the kittens, then hey, that's great too. Uh so that's that's the update. We won't know for a month if we can keep them. So we're going to try and keep the kids from naming them. Because otherwise that would be pretty rough. Oh boy! But if they get a clean bill of health, then I the plan is to go is, ahead and is keep. Is there them. any issues like can can anything they're carrying transfer? Maybe not to you, but can it like linger on your clothes? So we need to wash our hands, like like the for realsies, like for thirty seconds, wash our hands after we touch them. Uh, but other than that, they said no, it's not a problem so for Dash. Clothes are fine. You yeah. just need to wash your hands. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Yeah. So. Um, and then, oh, also, there's a, there's a local organization that we're working with to put some cameras up in the yard and hopefully figure out, because they think it's a colony. It turns out the mom that was going around the yard looking for them after we captured them was not mom. It was dad, oh. which they said was very unusual. But they are as sure as I was that it is dad, because the second I brought the big cat into the bathroom where I had them at that point, everyone calmed down. Like that, clearly he was looking for them. Oh, wait. Super unusual for cats. So wait, you, you caught the third? Oh yeah, we did catch dad. Oh. So dad has already been surrendered to a, a no-kill uh, like rehabilitation organization for feral cats. Um, cool. Yeah. That's cool. We, it's, it's not even so much that like it would be impossible, but I think that integrating um an, an adult, adult cat, feral cat is huge tough. adult feral cat with with dash and with the little kids was just a little beyond our bandwidth at the moment seems fair yeah okay moving on youtube 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 why not yeah. have five ads at the beginning of a video why not Seems cool to me. Because I'm already putting five ads in the video. That's going to make it 10. <laughs> I mean, you asked the question. They did, say, they did say, a YouTube rep noted this may happen with bumper ads that don't exceed six seconds. Uh, and I mentioned earlier in this video something about pushing until people protest and then pushing again later. Uh, but anyways, um, people are seeing ads already, apparently, that are longer than 10 seconds. So... That's cool. I've also seen a screenshot of 10 ads. I don't, maybe that was doctored. I don't know. Um, YouTube told PC Mag that this was part of a small experiment that showed users a bunch of ads at the beginning of a longer video rather than spacing them out. Uh, the spokesperson said the experiment is now concluded. Hmm. hmm. Okay. You know what the really funny thing is? One of the reactions in Floatplane chat was... Man, now I'm going to have to get premium. <sighs> oh, yeah. Okay. Apparently, it's not five. That's it's how you let five, them win. It's five to ten. 
five to ten. Yeah. That is absolutely wild. Apparently someone got ads on premium. That honestly straight up sounds like a bug. So tell me this. If I watch six ads before the video starts, do I not have to sit through any mid rolls? I think that's what they were saying. It's a small there's a it's a small experiment that shows a bunch of ads at the beginning of the video rather than spacing them out. Okay. Because But again, there's that whole thing where you push a little bit, then you can push more later on. So like yeah, we stack them all at the beginning because it's a long video. And maybe if the creator wants, they can enable throwing a big one in the middle too or something. And then we keep going from there. Um, Apparently someone had 10 unskippable ads on their video earlier today. That's a little much. That's I a actually, lot. man, I forgot how much uh, ads on YouTube drive me crazy because I I allowed my credit card information to lapse in my Google hey, account. I did the same thing about, recently about a week ago. Yeah, and I, I didn't even know that in YouTube Music it you you can't like play a specific song in your song in your playlist like it, if you don't will, have a paid account it will go to it eventually yeah yeah I was like, but it starts what? with other stuff yeah uh, and then there's ads between each song yeah oh my god i've just stopped listening to music <laughs> entirely i turned on the radio <laughs> i didn't realize i had let it lapse and then i was on a drive and it started playing ads and i was like what the heck and i figured out what was going on and i like looked at my dash really oddly and like slowly press the like turn on fm radio button and i was like what wow it's <laughs> it's been a Hello, long time friend. do yeah. you still work yeah. <laughs> airwaves <laughs> airwaves are you out there <laughs> airwaves is this transmission still going on apparently it was so that was cool it was legitimately better than listening to google play music with ads so sounds good fantastic yeah um, discussion question. Is this the death of YouTube? And what happens to no. LCT if it is? No, it's not because Google will keep pushing to the brink. I mean, that's their game, right? Um, there already are five, six ads on some videos, particularly like, you know, 15, 20, 30 minute videos. If creators Sprinkle enable, if creators enable just algorithmically placed mid rolls, YouTube will serve you an ad as often as they think you'll tolerate. So one of the things I've noticed is that on my personal account, I actually get served fewer ads than I do on some of our corporate accounts. Oh, do you abandon? Because I will just abandon. I will, just, I will close the app when I get an ad. Um, and not because it's like, I'm, it's like some form of silent protest, but because I just no honestly was done pooping anyway. It wasn't worth it, yeah. And so I'll just leave. So my, my ad tolerance is extremely low. And they know, they know that. So they will serve based on what your tolerance is. Yikes. Yeah, but yeah. it's not the end of YouTube. No chance. Not even close. There's no just, chance. there's nothing else like it. They also experiment and push and pull back and try different things. Like they're so huge that they can absorb a little bit of a downturn and then figure their stuff out. Absolutely. And it's not like they rolled this out on mass. So I, I'm not no. panicking yet, but I, uh, I don't personally think that YouTube needs more ads than they currently have. Uh, the ones that drive me, I don't mind the one skippable one, even if it's like a longer cooldown. But when when I have to interact with it multiple times, like when I get two, two, um, is it two skip one unskippable? No, one unskippable is better than two skippable. I don't know. Whatever I don't have to interact with, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because I can just, I can kind of just blank out and have no idea what I just looked at, which is, I guess, a, a life skill. Uh, but if I have to interact with it, then it is a, it's a hassle for me. I do wonder if they track, like, uh, ads blocked somehow. Oh, I'm sure they do. It's like, I wonder if this I'm experiment sure could show an increase in that, if that makes sense. Uh, probably. Like, I, I would think I would think that would prompt some more people. And I, don't, I don't just mean volume, because, yes, obviously, you're serving more ads. The volume's going to go up. I mean percentage of users. Which is what you were saying, but I'm just making sure people understood. Yeah, it's tough because it really depends on how the user is blocking, whether they're using Piehole, whether they're using a browser extension. I, I suspect they have the tools to... It's Google. They can probably figure it out. Yeah, to figure it out one way or another. But there'd be there'd be some noise in that signal. Mm -hmm. Logicus asks, what if you could just pre-watch as many ads as you want Oof. and unlock points that you spend on watch time? Oh, uh, that would never work because 
every business and developer would know that people would just set things to like pre-watch and then just walk away? No, no, because they could just, uh, they could attention track through your webcam. Dystopian! <sighs> you don't like it, but you know that I'm oh, right. No. Yeah, you are. You're totally right. Yeah. <laughs> use like, use like, uh, what is it? Like Windows Hello tech style technology to like make sure not only are you sitting there, but you're actually looking at the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of time before you can go and like towel you you and weren't... buy like fake, <laughs> fake eye things. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't actively smiling at the ad. Yeah, you didn't. That think it one was only funny? counts for half points. Yeah, <laughs> next time laugh. Yeah, <laughs> dance, monkey, dance. If you want bonus points, pull out your wallet while looking at the screen. <laughs> oh, apparently, Piehole doesn't easily block YouTube ads. I thought it did back when we did our video on it, but maybe they, <laughs> maybe they've gotten During around the mineral, it. You have to crack a can of a uh, Verication Mountain Dew to keep watching the video. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness oh no all Oof. right Oof. Uh, anyways merch messages or amazon selling dangerous goods oh we should do a couple of merch messages because i think we've got a lot of them hey uh chase you've got uh 21 incoming are uh, you uh I have four I incoming four. on mine try to refresh maybe. maybe yeah maybe refresh it oops oops i oops. might have put too many in the potential and the Created, yeah. so you might got to look through them a little there's bit. There's a there's a couple buggos, but it's still working. I've just needed to refresh once or twice. Good gravy. We have 43 curated merch messages, which means we're going to have to move through them a little quicker than usual. Yeah. Andrew the Hut. Hey, like Luke and Linus. Thinking about upgrading my home network setup from a basic router. Curious what you think about the Dream Machine slash Unify setup compared to a DIY setup with PFSense. Oh, different strokes for different folks. The Dream Machine Unify setup is not cheap. Whereas a DIY PFSense box can be as cheap as the computer that you already have sitting there next to you, like that you weren't doing anything with. Um, PFSense is absolutely a little more DIY. It's going to take a bit more time investment, but I can't say that I'm anything but thrilled with my Unify setup at home right now. I haven't really been tempted to go back to PFSense. So if you want to spend the money, whew, Ubiquity makes some nice stuff. But if you want to save a buck, PF Sense, it's good stuff too. Yeah. Alfonso, I want to live stream games, but I don't think my PC can handle streaming and gaming simultaneously. Rather than getting a second computer, do you think a Steam Deck and a dock would work well? I think the look on his face says it all. No. I mean, you could do it. Like yep. if you wanted to game on the Steam Deck and stream with your computer... That could absolutely work. But you'd What's be, the res on the Stream Deck? Well, 1280 by 800. Mm. I mean, mm. okay, it's not ideal. Did I say it was ideal? Mm. I didn't say it was ideal. Nope. Okay. And for 400 bucks, I mean, check out the video we uploaded recently, $69 gaming PC. Like All the GPUs are on crazy sale right now. Yeah. Like it's a... It, man, we're working on the upgraded $69 gaming PC, the $169 gaming PC. Nice. And <laughs> it's kind of wacky. <laughs> it's fast. Cool. It's like good. Nice. For under 200 bucks. That's pretty Great. sweet. It's a, good, it's a good time to be a PC gamer again for a freaking change. Uh, Joe B., I have a Quadro that works when I boot into Linux, but when using Windows, it not only doesn't output a signal, but also my 5600G doesn't output a signal until the card is removed. Should I chuck it? That sounds like you're switching to Linux. Let's go. It sounds... I mean, okay, I have to ask, you know, Joe, have you tried reformatting your Windows partition? You it should... Sound, yeah absolutely do that it could be some kind of bugged out driver situation i mean ddu before you reformat and then if that's the case then i would absolutely try it in another computer what? to see if it's just isolated to something about your machine your windows install then at that point i mean hey hook a hook a, a brother or a sister up and uh give one of your linux using friends a quadro <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely Zachary asks, will we be getting short circuit sweatpants to go with the short circuit hoodie? I think so. I'm actually not oh. sure. I'm sorry. Oh. Anonymous. Uh, Archive. Tim, your Apocalypse PC, did you think about adding mesh or a filter to keep out mice or other vermin? 
I'm going to be honest with you. Did you see the Apocalypse PC? I skimmed it. Okay. It was, I, I very much enjoyed the comments about the piping and them saying it would be really hard to find. That was my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> the Apocalypse PC. So the real uh, concept for that video, and I think this got lost in translation somewhere along the line. I kind of arrived on set on that one. After having been off for a week while all the prep was done for it, like I was on vacation, normally I would be, I would have my finger on the pulse for the projects that we're working on. And what happened with that one was the Apocalypse PC, which was supposed to be like, like a, like a, like a bomb proof, bulletproof kind of PC concept where the whole thing was like sealed and like indestructible, kind of got morphed into the or like the prepper pc like the indestructible destructible one uh kind of got merged into the plausible deniability pc which was the one that was supposed to be buried out in the yard with cables that could be quickly cut with one command the thing could be wiped and no one would ever find it and they kind of became one the same thing yeah and so I saw some comments going, hey, why did you bury it? Why did, did, didn't you think of like flooding? Also, if you were going to be inside with the keyboard, monitor, and mouse, why don't you just have the computer there and just put the solar panels outside? I hear you. I'm not going to lie. It kind of looked like you guys got a, a, a truck bed toolbox and someone spent a decent amount of time putting some pipes on it and you literally threw a computer in it. And then spent the rest of the time hunting for pipes. But it was kind of, it was pretty it was entertaining to watch. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that was me pulling one out of my butt. <laughs> um the in <clears throat> fact, the pipe tracking thing was something that I was I had actually asked because I knew the video was I already did know the video was oh, gonna be a little content light. Watching you run that excavator was genuinely hilarious like i okay i i, I forgot about that till now I, I remember sitting there and being like i'm having way too much fun just like watching you run an es uh, excavator for whatever reason i have no idea why but it was great it I, had been so long <laughs> and it's so it's so small <laughs> okay it didn't Watching your look... first scoop pick up like two rocks or whatever. Oh my goodness. It's actually very funny. You, you should, should see how small that machine <laughs> looked with Nick Callanan on it. <laughs> He's probably bigger than the machine. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had a couple people critiquing my form. Apparently the blade's supposed to go in the front. I actually had the blade in the front. And then uh, I, I, like Callanan told me I was supposed to have it at the back as, Wait, a, as a thing or something. You're supposed to put the blade down. Uh, instead of just leaving the tracks while you're digging. Yeah. And so I had it at the back because I thought it was like to keep me from tipping back. But then that wasn't working at all. But I think I had it at the back on like my dad's bigger Kamatsu thing back when I was a teenager. I don't know. But yeah, I, ha I hadn't touched one in almost 20 years. So it was it was like throwback to my childhood, basically, like sitting there at the controls. It's fun. <laughs> it's totally fun. <laughs> it was it was great. I really enjoyed that part. Anyway, uh, that whole video. So the the I, I emphasized the excavator, even though that was not really supposed to be a ton of the content. And then uh, I arrived on uh, on set, which is at my house, but like still like at the prepared shoot, and found out that we had not sourced one of those tracker things. None of the research had been done because the team had decided that that wasn't really necessary for the content. I was like, oh my God, guys, there is no content. Like whether I'm gonna use these conduits or not, we need to go find them. Yeah. We need to go on this adventure because yeah. that there's was no worth adventure. It because yeah, not gonna lie, the rest of it was uh, <laughs> sort of a computer tossed in a box. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that part is actually very entertaining and a little bit enlightening. Showing yeah, showing how that thing works yeah, it was, was cool. cool. Yeah, like it was it's actually it's a cool video, but it's mostly a cool video because of uh the side quests. At, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The mainline quest in this game, not great. Yeah. Side quests, A plus. Yeah, yeah. So yep. if you guys were wondering, yes. Sometimes we do go into a video knowing that it's probably going to be kind of shit. 
Um, but, but we do our best. To, to, yeah, it ended up being pretty cool. So, add, I mean, it worked. I call them learning outcomes. Yeah. Like anything that you might learn from the video, I try to make sure that in every video, you will learn something that you didn't learn in a video from us before. And so that like electronic divining rod thing for finding underground pipes was super cool. Is that actually what it's called, by the way? No. Okay, yeah. I heard you say that in the video, and I was like, there's no way. No, no, that's just what I'm calling okay, it. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I never bothered to look it up, but I was like, if it's actually called that, that's... No, like... it's called like a pipe finder or something. Yeah. yeah like that... the, the most like construction bro name oh, yeah. possible. Which ever. is great, to be yeah. to be clear. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, Beautiful naming scheme. So yeah, Tim, the Apocalypse PC was a show, and um, thank you for watching it. Uh, Blargarden. <laughs> Hey, Linus and Luke, waiting for new CPUs and GPUs to go live. Going to build my first water-cooled build. Who do you think has the best water blocks? I honestly couldn't tell you. We mostly use EVGA. EVGA. We mostly use EK these days just because they are awesome to work with. The quality is good. I think their stuff looks great, No too. complaints. It looks awesome. So because yeah. a lot of the time we're doing showcase builds for videos, we want it to look really great. Uh, so I couldn't really, I can't, re I honestly can't really comment beyond that. There's lots of good reputable brands out there. We've just mostly been an EK shop for some time now. Um, yeah, you asked about Corsair. Yeah, I've had no complaints with Corsair's products, but, uh, we've just, yeah, we've used a lot of, a lot of EK and I haven't had a reason to use something else. To Reaper. Have you considered opening a merch warehouse in the Maritimes to have coverage of both coasts? Yeah, that worked really great for NCIX when they opened an Eastern warehouse. <laughs> in all seriousness, there were other much bigger problems that ultimately killed NCIX, but I'm aware that commercial warehouse space in the Maritimes is cheap, and I'm aware that we could get cheaper shipping to particularly the Eastern seaboard, but it's just... Even though we've gotten, like, big... BC still classifies us as a small business. Did you know that? Up until a hundred employees, you're still yeah. technically a small business. Like we're not, we're not that big. If we were to open up a shipping facility, whether it was on the East Coast or whether it was in Europe or wherever else, I think it's fair to say we would need at least a staff of somewhere between five and ten people to run it. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. So we would be increasing our headcount by as anywhere from like seven to 12% or whatever that works out to. That is, that's, that's not trivial. You don't just, you don't just increase your head count by 10%. It's a lot to manage. Who's going to, who's going to keep track of it all? Uh, yeah, I just don't have the bandwidth right now. I think that's the biggest, the biggest takeaway there. Um, Michael asks, do you guys have much experience with how production support works in large companies? I don't even know what you mean by production support. Um, like like video production or like product production? I'm sorry, Michael. I don't know if I can answer this. A production support person slash team is responsible for monitoring the production servers, scheduled jobs, incident management, and receiving incidents and requests. Production support covers the practices and disciplines of supporting the IT, IT systems slash applications which are currently being used by the end users. No. I do not have nope. much experience with how that works in large companies. Nope. At NCIX, I would fix my own workstation. Yeah, and a lot of people here are pretty technical. So I think it's either like you are or the person next to you probably is. So you kind of just figure it out. Yeah. Oh, Reed C asks, with what has happened, do we think this will cause a ripple effect with other companies breaking their partnerships with NVIDIA or even moving to AMD in response in some way to the whole situation? Honestly, I, I kind of doubt it. I don't I don't think NVIDIA is genuinely going to do any introspection. I don't think that the rest of their partners will risk damaging that relationship. Um, because, and this is one of the reasons I'm so worried about EVGA's future. Without GPUs, you know, what is their identity anymore? You know, why would I necessarily, and I'm not saying they make great power supplies, you know, but why would I get an EVGA power supply when I'm already on Asus's product page getting in an, a Strix GPU? Well, I'll just get a Strix power supply. You got to think about the way that an average consumer might shop. And so I think that that's one of the ways that NVIDIA um, 
keeps a lot of their partners in line because even if GPUs are loss leaders, which is ridiculous and they shouldn't be, loss leaders do play a role in a manufacturer or a retailer's strategy. So if you just don't have that product that drives people to your brand, that keeps people talking about you, how will you sell your other products? It's very challenging. So no, I don't think anyone else is bound to break ranks, but if they do, then hey, maybe NVIDIA will have to reconsider. Uh, Matthew P asks, hey Linus, can we get the pet goat story? Oh boy. Um, we were at uh, an animal auction and uh, for some reason, I don't know why, I got it in my head that I wanted to get a goat. Um, they were super cute, baby goats, adorable. And so I got a goat. My goat's name was Gobi. And um, the the understanding was the goat would be my pet. Um, she had a she had a like a, a pen that was separate from from all the other animals and I'd go out and hang with Gobi. Uh, like very, very friendly, very uh, very engaged animal. Um, the problem is that as Gobi got older, she would uh, escape a lot. Goats are natural escape artists. And um, if it had been possible to keep Gobi penned, I don't think that we ever would have, uh, we ever would, I don't think I ever would have consented to have Gobi taken to slaughter. But the problem was that in the area that we were living, the probability of Gobi getting out on the road, which was what she was doing, and ultimately getting either hit by a car or killed by a bear, um, as there were many of those in the area, uh, was getting uncomfortably high. And tracking down Gobi and bringing her home was getting more and more and more difficult. And so what I... what. I ultimately agreed to with my parents was that, yeah, um, if Gobi was going to end up dead anyway, it might as well be for food. We lived on a farm. And so Gobi was far from the first animal and not even the first animal with a name that we ultimately slaughtered, but that I didn't want to eat Gobi. So if they were having Gobi for dinner, I would have something else was sort of the agreement. And then they tricked me and told me it was like ostrich or something. And so I did end up um, eating goat, which was not my intention. So I was not thrilled, as you guys can probably imagine. That's pretty annoying. Because that was not the deal. But um, I think my parents probably thought it was pretty funny at the time. Tricking people about food isn't funny. Um, but I don't think that it's particularly funny, personally. That is the pet goat story. Uh, I'm sure that if my sister and I got together and built another computer, we could probably tell lots more stories. If you're not a Floatplane subscriber, I think there's going to be some stuff that ends up in an exclusive on Floatplane that didn't make it into the YouTube cut. But um, I don't know that we're going to get too deep into our childhood stuff, you know, in public. Um, it's just not worth it. I don't yeah. need the drama in my life. Should we do another topic, maybe? Uh, yeah, I just got sure. signed out of the doc, so you're uh, you're on point. Okay, sounds good. There is also a lot of merch messages. Yeah, we might just have to cut some of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Amazon selling dangerous goods. Sure. You know, I want to talk about it. Yeah, All let's right. talk about it. Uh, the latest issue of many is an issue with a three-prong male-to-male extension cord meant for generators. This product is very unsafe. When plugged into a generator or outlet, the opposite end has live electricity, posing risk of electrocution. When plugged into, uh, additionally, the flow of power in revert in a, the reverse direction can circumvent safety features uh, of the home's electrical system and start a fire. The cable is also very short, which means the generator would be uh, close to the home, increasing risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. People call them suicide cords. <laughs> what a great name. Uh, also, that note about increasing risk of carbon monoxide poisoning is very interesting because in July of 2021, Amazon was sued by U.S. Product Safety Agency, by a U.S. Product Safety Agency, over dangerous items, including a carbon monoxide detector that fails to alarm. So you can get the Wombo Combo, 
you can get the increase in carbon monoxide poisoning and the chance that your carbon monoxide detector won't work. Awesome. Also, they used to sell flammable children's pajamas, hair dryers that could electrocute you if dropped in water, and they stated that Amazon is responsible uh, uh, for third-party sellers. Oh, wow. Amazon Basics products have been known to fail spectacularly as well. There are examples included in the article, including pictures. Um, uh, is that is that that's an a lightning Ethernet cable? cable? Oh, it's a lightning cable. Wow. Whoops. That's a that's a heck of a thing. In 2017, a USB cable caught on fire. In 2019, a charger caught on fire as soon as it was plugged into a car. That's wow. Yikes. In 2019, a microwave caught on fire and almost burnt a house down. Microwaves are powerful. They're a heck of a thing. Uh, the microwave was analyzed by the University of Maryland Center for Advanced Life Cycle Engineering and was found that the heat... That's a... <laughs> what a name. Uh, and, <laughs> and was found that the heating device on the inside was the cause of the fire, acting as if someone put tin foil inside of it. In 2019, an Amazon Basic Surge Protector caught fire with a single phone charger plugged into the device, unused at the time of the incident. Yes. Woo! Now, to be clear, you sell enough hundreds of thousands of products, eventually you're going to have a couple defects. Uh, <laughs> but the the main reason that I wanted to bring this up was because I felt like it uh, it opened up a really, uh, a really I think, a deeper conversation about how consumer consumer protection has changed in the move from retail to online. There is essentially zero barrier to entry for some random to start produce some random product and start selling it to any random person regardless of which jurisdiction they live in what their level of technical expertise is like whether they're qualified to use the product and you know i'm trying to think like would i have even had access to buy something as dangerous as that mail to mail power cord when i was 15 there's there's two there's two yeah really there's uh there's two things in floatplane chat that I think are are pretty good. Jerry Rigged says there's a huge difference between defective product and inherently dangerous one by design. Absolutely, defective products happen. That's yep. a thing. Um, but inherently the, dangerous is really bad, and that's yes. that's really the main that was really the main thing that I had wanted to discuss here was that there is comparatively nothing standing between because at least with like a retailer. There is, they have to be the first line, right? When something goes wrong, when a customer gets mad and comes and complains about a problem, they have to deal with it. Whereas Amazon has this level of abstraction with these third-party sellers, and they're not the only one. Anyone, anyone that takes a marketplace approach to third-party products that are available on their site has this like this this shield in front of them that's like, oh well, I mean, we we didn't sell that, we just had the listing. Yeah, we'll take it down, but. I, I they're not they're not doing and they're not being forced to do the due diligence that I feel like a brick and mortar retailer would just inherently have to do. Oh yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah. And not even just have to do that would just inherently do. And you you, you wouldn't see put this... something on the shelf without like looking at it first because shelf space is valuable. You see this on a lot of products too where uh they they're just riddled with lies. Um, I used to rant about this all the time and then uh, I'm not going to name who made the video, but I watched a video from us fairly recently that was really bad about this in my opinion, but saying oh. that things are, are, for instance, I don't remember if this is how it was said in the video, but waterproof is like not a thing. Yeah. Waterproof is stupid. Yeah. I don't remember which one, but it was something like that. It was like waterproof or fireproof or something that was oh, mentioned in our video. Did we say something was waterproof? Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Oh, it was. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was definitely waterproof. I'm remembering the video now. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. did I host it? No. Okay. I'll. I'll talk to. I'll talk to the team because I'm like even in. Uh, okay. So Vessi, longtime sponsor of ours, love Vessi. Uh, their talking points say waterproof, and I always, when I do the read, I always change it to water resistant. Because, yeah. And I've told them like I'm not going to say that. That's stupid. Yeah. Nothing is waterproof. Water will literally cut a path through stone. Nothing is waterproof and that's fine you give it enough time yeah water water will <laughs> f you up son it'll find a way yeah <laughs> uh, but there's there's a bunch of products i don't remember who the video is from i wish it did because it was actually really good uh but the one of them that i saw recently was was flashlights there's a bunch of product categories on amazon where it's just filled with lies 
And I'll yeah. give I'll give a it's I'll give four, a four forty five thousand lumens. No, it isn't for some crazy duration. And I'll give a, a plus one to Anchor here because they pointed out Anchor flashlights, and I'm sure there are other ones too. But it it looks bad on Amazon. Anchor's flashlight looks bad because it doesn't last as long and it's yeah. not as bright. But then the claims about lasting a certain amount of time and being a certain amount of brightness are just categorically false. And yeah. then anchors were actually accurate. Yeah. And it's super and it's frustrating because you're hurting these brands that are actually trying to be real with their information. It's like if we actually... said our 64 ounce water bottle will keep your drink ice cold for 23 days. Yeah. No, it and then, won't. And then it creates this arms race of lying. Yeah. Which is just not good. And like they, they should, in my opinion, have to crack down on stuff like that like properly. They should be responsible for the information on the site you're saying. Yeah. And And you know that they don't because it's not just flashlights. Oh no, it's everything. It's like everything. It's everything. I mean, we went through this with uh, dash cams. Yeah. Dash cams are one of those categories where uh, until we made that video, I would have had absolutely no idea what to buy. In fact, I tried, which is why we made that video. Yeah. Uh, there's another comment in float plane chat from Jaden. Power cables on Amazon is a huge problem in general. Some of the most popular ones are so thin that they could safely carry basically zero power. Uh, yeah. that's a very good that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, I, I recently watched a review of extension cords because I was sketched out about that essentially. Yeah. Cause I was like, this actually seems like something that could be sketchy if you want it to go for a pretty long distance and you want to send a pretty decent amount of power through it. Like I need to find, find something that can do this properly. And that I actually believe is saying the right information because I don't believe things on product pages anymore because of basically Amazon, because it's creeping to other sites now too. Because people are like, well, Amazon doesn't do it. Amazon doesn't do it properly, and we have to compete with Amazon, so we're just going to lie too, which is just horrible. Narissa yeah. says, can't wait for the lab to start testing this kind of misleading marketing. Yeah, honestly, looking at how underserved the public is absolutely in just like areas I didn't even think about. Like, I didn't even, I did, I'm sorry, I didn't consider extension cords. I just, no, yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah. I but it can be sketch. If you're served something that's just junk, our that's lab dangerous. could be three times the size tomorrow. Yeah. And we would run out of space if we wanted to try to do everything that I'm looking at going, this needs to be tested. Someone needs to do this. Yeah. So we'll there's some I don't know, I don't really want to talk about it, but there's actually some uh some really cool stuff currently being tested at the lab. Oh. That I know about. You don't want to talk about we it? We didn't have a meeting this week. What? So I don't know if you do. I well, I don't think I know. What's you, going on? You might. But I well, don't know. Are you are you able to tell me or nope? Wait, why? Not right now. What the hell? We're live on the show. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool. It's actually very exciting. It reminded me of uh, you know, um, a push that we did a really long time ago when we first started the company. If I was I was actually talking about this in the call. I was like, this push that you guys are doing, while not the same feels similar to like the 700 series push that we did okay. back in the day. All right. Like the amount of effort and the rallying behind it and like really, really wanting to make sure that it's like on point and good and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. But yeah, that's all, that's all the information you get. It might be entirely fine for me to say it. I just don't know and I'm not going to risk it. So, yeah. Got it. It is what it is. Let's talk about this. CNG Tunes over on YouTube asks, what's with the whole sponsoring this or that portion of a video thing? What's that about? What is that about? I don't know. I genuinely, I don't, I actually Some don't know. Some <laughs> brand agencies have it in their head that there could be some kind oh. of liability, excuse me, or negative brand association or something bad that could somehow be mitigated by changing the wording from they sponsored the video to they sponsored only the portion of the video the that is in. their talking points <laughs> and nothing else. Very cool. Personally, I find that wording kind of jarring and um, flow breaking for the content. Oh, absolutely. And from my point of view, and who knows, maybe I'm about to lose a sponsor or two. From my point of view, if you're not man enough to sponsor oh. the video, 
If you don't like the Personal. content or think it's safe enough to sponsor the video, then maybe you just shouldn't sponsor the video. The only thing I disagree like, with that is the man enough phrase. I obviously I I'm know. being toxic masculinity e uh, just to make my point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah At yeah. least I hope that was obvious. I, you, you just can't be careful enough. Uh, that's fair. It's fair. There's a uh, anyway. <laughs> the the point the point is that if you if you have such misgivings about sponsoring a given channel that you're afraid that their content is going to reflect yeah. so poorly on your brand that you would hate for the whole video to be sponsored. No, only this portion. Should you really be engaging with that channel? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And it's also just like not true. <laughs> you're, sponsor you're sponsoring the video. You are. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it's just obvious every, bullshit. Every time I, I thought it was like a regulatory change or something that you had no. to do. No. Because every time I hear it, I'm just like, what? It, 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 no. <laughs> it's not, like the only way it could make sense is if it was like section and they didn't actually mean just their slice. They meant like the results portion of the video is brought to you by whatever. Yeah, like if they actually contributed, maybe like yeah. uh, like testing apparatus yeah. or something like that. Okay, our results are brought to you by yes. whatever. Yes, yeah. Fine. That bit make that if, would make sense. If the me. only part of the video that you sponsored is literally your ad, that's not a video sponsorship. Yep, yep. Maybe we just need to start calling it something else. This part of the video is a message from this brand. Because <laughs> it's not sponsored by them. It's yeah. just the wrong word. Yeah. I don't know. So Things are weird. So I've had a lot of people ask me over the last little bit, because we did a couple spots recently that were structured like that. And that is my response. I think it's You're silly, but I understand in a lot of cases, why the legal department is stepping in and saying, um, actually, we need to be super, super careful about this because it wouldn't be the first time that a brand, so now I'm, now I'm putting on my reasonable hat, it wouldn't be the first time that a brand got burned for sponsoring some some content creator. Yes. And if they could come in and say, yes. well, um, actually, we only sponsored just like our specific messaging. We have nothing to do with the viewpoints of that particular person. Then, you know, I guess there's some plausible deniability there, but I think that if the person's so toxic that you're worried about that, then you probably just shouldn't sponsor them. I would also uh, raise a point, I guess I'm not arguing, but I'm raising a point that uh, this type of stuff will always change. It will always be in motion uh, because yes. agencies exist and agencies need to feel like they actually matter and did something. So they're going to make small, unimportant changes and slap their stamp on it and be like, yeah. I have to deal with enough agencies that I am not going to weigh in on the thing he just said. <laughs> Thank you, agencies. Love you guys. <laughs> we, value your, we value your business. <laughs> yep. Good job existing. All right, let's keep going. Um... Oh no, Intel's doing some stupid rebranding. Yeah, let's do some merch jump, messages. Jump oh, yeah, I don't know. Here we'll gloss over it. Intel rebrands laptop, Pentium, and Celeron processors. Now it will be what will it be now? Flagship brands are now Core Evo and V Pro. That's the thing. They will just be labeled Intel processor. So they're taking Pentium and Celeron names off. The new Intel processor branding will simplify our offer. Will it? <laughs> Will it simplify your offerings? Because now there's an Intel processor that happens to be Intel uh. Core or Intel Evo. And then there's an Intel processor that's just an Intel processor. Why did, You're right. That does simplify things. Why did they ditch Intel inside? I don't know. Because that sounds like Intel inside sounds like an insanely better version of this. Because you just slap Intel inside on it. And then on the fine print, like under the laptop or whatever, you actually put the real model number. Why would you want? Intel processor to mean like tier low end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's even worse. I didn't even think about that. That's that brutal. <laughs> Probably an agency. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who would have done that. Uh, that's crazy. Wow. Oh. What? <laughs> I honestly, okay, look, Intel or whoever else, I will. 
I will contract for you, okay? <laughs> Look, I'm not going to come up with the branding for you, but I will I will contract, I'll tell you what, 100 bucks. The denial that's my, the denial department. That's my rate to do a sanity check on your new branding concept. That's not bad. I'll have a look at it for you as long as it takes me less than like 5 minutes. I'll look at it for you. You can you can put your checks in the mail, address them to Chase Douglas, all right? He he's got you, okay? And I will tell you if it is among the 5% stupidest things I've ever heard. Okay? That is the service that I will offer you. And Intel could have avoided this if they had just paid $100 to Chase Douglas over here um, <laughs> so that I could tell them that this is among the 5% stupidest things I've ever heard. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Way to go. All right. Um... <laughs> <sighs> you want to pick some merch messages, Luke? Sure. I've been trying to work through the, the potential section, which is a new section on the merch messages yeah. dashboard. Uh, but I'll go to curate it, I guess. Sure, let's do it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. No, I haven't played Timberborn no. or The Wandering Village. Me neither. Thanks for the suggestion, though, Chris E. Yes. Um, any plans for those PVC pipes you dug up? I think you, you ran a string through it, right? So you could just mm -hmm. decide later. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do have plans. That is where the pool house will be. So oh. if nothing else, yeah. I can run power from the mechanical room to the pool house Sweet. instead of digging a new trench. Yeah, that's actually really nice. Unfortunately, we still have to get gas from somewhere else around the side of the house. So we still had to trench all the way over to get gas because there's not enough gas pressure in the mechanical room to also uh, do the pool heating. But it, it did save us a trench at least. So yeah, it was totally worth it. And also we made a video about it because the video sure as heck wasn't about putting a PC in a box. It was about finding those conduits. Uh, question for Linus or Luke. How would you recommend getting internet to a detached garage? Ethernet over power or something better? Thanks for all you do. Um, I, ooh, Ethernet over power could work if they're both through the same panel. Dishes? Yeah, you could do you could do a point-to-point -point dish from someone like Ubiquiti. They depends have some if, pretty affordable stuff. Depends if you have like trees in the way or whatever. A few hundred bucks. But, but um, if, if not... You, you could also it. just get a direct burial like Cat6 cable freaking bury it like micro trench it you can get micro trenching um ex uh, attachments for chainsaws you can just direct bury it and it'll be good for at least like 10 years or whatever assuming it's decent direct burial cable i know someone who did a a cheaper version of dish to dish um from their place to a detached garage and it worked great and has been working great. Yeah, so. you can always uh, you can always uh, jury rig a dish to dish setup with like literally tin cans on like okay. a regular consumer Wi Fi router. <laughs> That's actually a thing. So you do two in um, bridge mode, and then you would or is it bridge mode? What like a wireless bridge or whatever? That makes I sense. Yeah, I, I forget what it's called, but you can set them up so that one is essentially a switch that you plug client devices in, and then it's just got this wireless backbone back to the main network. So there's lots of different ways. Um, I. I don't know if... Uh, okay, so, hi, Linus and Luke. How would you get your SO more tech savvy? I grew up with tech, and I'm used to troubleshooting. My GF, on the other hand, is not used to try to solve problems with tech on her own. She seems like she is either afraid or has no clue. In my opinion, uh, then you should do it for her. Yeah, you that's know? your whole value add. Yeah, no she, offense. Yeah, she doesn't have to learn I mean, that as well. It's You're not, your, it's not your looks. It's not your, you know, the money you make. It's fixing her tech crap. If she doesn't find you handsome, she should at least find you handy. Let's go. Okay. To be, I'm, I'm kidding. Maybe you look great. But the point is that, so what? Not everybody's <laughs> yeah, into matter. everything, right? If she's interested in it, great. Yeah. Uh, then just, I don't know, start small and, and show her how to do some, some basic troubleshooting stuff. Create some basic problems um, and, and try to kind of help guide the hand but don't solve it for her but it sounds like she might not really be that interested so just don't yeah all right have you ever considered a 3d printer roundup before no all right 3d printers internet security vr um streaming Look up 3D printing nerd. Dead, dead. He's awesome. Dead, like absolute video performance killer topics. And to be clear, if if we're running like a smaller channel that's focused on those things, or even just a smaller channel in general, it would be fine to cover topics in those verticals. But at LTT's scale, 
unless we can get a million and a half to three million views on something, it doesn't make sense anymore because it will harm our ability to get a million and a half or three million views tomorrow if we upload something that only gets 500,000 today. It's just the game that we play. And you can expect over the next few years to see smaller channels that I intend to keep smaller for that reason, so that we can cover stuff that would destroy the LTT channel yep. that funds all of that other content. Yep. It can't kill the golden goose. That's one of the ways that people use Floatplane, actually, just to self-plug really quick, is they put stuff on Floatplane that they know people will like a lot, but they know those people that will like it a lot are a relatively small subset of their users, and it would kill yep. their YouTube channel. But those users do really want that content. It's just like, Gugh. how do I make it worth it to make this content when that subset of users isn't big enough to fuel an entire YouTube channel? Well, Floatplane can fit that role. Um Hello, have you considered testing second monitor effects on your PC? What having a YouTube video does to your game's frame rate? Uh, that mm. type of stuff is honestly quite hard, but the labs might be able to figure something out. Yeah, I think that it's would be though. that would be definitely like a cool thing to investigate. Does multi-monitor like tank your FPS? I know there was a bug a while back where I forget if it was Nvidia or AMD, but they had like super high power consumption if you had two monitors plugged in and then like it was totally fine if you had only one. Interesting. But that's the sort of thing that I don't think we would test regularly. We would kind of, you know, look into it and kind of go, oh, okay, is there anything interesting here? And then if there isn't, I think that might just be the end of it. We'd just say, okay, yeah, there's nothing interesting. No article, no nothing. Because it's either, it's either a problem or it's not really news. Have you ever considered making effectively like one of those really short versions of lanyards? No. Uh, this this person said wrist size lanyard, but I, I've seen them before. They're just little short lanyards. No, I'd never considered that at all. Yeah, I think people like it more for like actually attaching to like a belt loop or something oh. and letting it hang out. Um, Do you really want your keys hanging out though? I don't. Yeah, you shouldn't. But I think you might attach it and then put it in your pocket. Oh, I see. That's another option. Huh. Makes it easy to pull out, mm -hmm. other stuff like that. I don't okay. know, just an idea. Should we I've have, definitely seen them before. Should we have Chase read a couple of merch messages? I realized he's our producer today, but we've had no. hardly had him do anything. Okay. You've been reading all of them. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Get a word in. Nah, yeah. it's all good. All right, I'm going to go up to potentials and keep working on that. Okay, and I'll answer the curated ones here. Uh, I bought a Nothing Phone 1 on release day. I noticed a defect on the first day, made a support ticket. After a week, I got a return label from them. I sent it back for a refund. I've heard nothing since July 28th. Well, the name's appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> what is your worst uh, tech purchasing experience? Oh, man. There was that GPU that was completely mislabeled. I bought from Sapphire back in the day. Um... Man, worst tech purchasing experience. I, I probably shouldn't count anything to do with an ISP. <laughs> but I, everyone knows that they're awful, you know, basically universally. Um, worst tech purchase experience. Yeah, probably that like falsely advertised GPU from Sapphire way, way, way back, like in the in the 2000s. It's tough for me because I don't... I don't um, have to buy tech as often anymore. And even when I did, I tended to research it pretty thoroughly. Like that's my passion, right? So, hmm. Oh, I, oh yeah, the, the dash cams I bought, that was terrible. I bought two of them and neither of them worked, not even for a moment. So that sucked. And that inspired that dash cam video we did recently. There you go. All right. I got one. Do you have a terrible one or are you busy on uh I didn't hear the question. Your worst tech purchasing experience. Oh, I think they've all been pretty good. Yeah, we, we do our research. That's sort of why yeah. we're sitting in these chairs at this point. If we didn't, then you shouldn't listen to us. Yeah. Is that was your answer similar? I, I came up with a couple bad things. Okay. I bought some dash cams that ended up just being manufactured e waste. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's like that's just you're walking into a minefield. Dash, <laughs> dash cams is crazy. I I like tr started trying to do research on that years ago and just abandoned it. I'm just excited for ours, and I'm just gonna probably buy whatever one like they say is good. I still had an NCIX gift card when they went under, oh. so that's a pretty terrible tech purchase. <laughs> I don't even know how much oh, was man. on it. It could have been a lot. I have no idea. Brutal. No one can even check unless I could get my hands on like the old NCIX servers that <laughs> got found. 
um, after the fact, and that was a whole that was a whole data privacy security problem. Uh, oh, wow. Next question from Adam K. Uh, hey Linus, any any updates on the Wag hoodie? Also trying to apply a discount code. Uh, a failed one, like if you try Honey, have a successful one, removes the merch message option, at least in Firefox. We can probably get that fixed. Oh, well, don't oh. fail to type in the discount code, <laughs> bro. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, Why are you trying to get that. discounts? Do you not want to support the channel? <laughs> I think he was mainly asking about the WAG hoodie, though. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to... Bug, I'm going to bring that, up... That bug might not exist in the new theme. Mm. We've, we've been focusing on the new theme. Um... This is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Jake's cat Arlo in the wag hoodie. He actually put he actually put a dog hoodie on his cat. He's got, he's got a big cat. Surprisingly, Arlo's not even that pissed off. Yeah. Um yeah, I so I can't really show this to you guys easily, but we are we are getting samples in. So like size run samples, which means it's it's months away, not quarters away, at the very least. Cool. Uh, Noah J says needed a new water bottle for a while now. This is uh, just what the doctor ordered. We all mm, know the doctor that told you to drink more water. Companies aren't our friends, uh, but has there ever been a company brand game that you've been a, a shameless fanboy or shill for? Shameless fanboy. I don't know if I'd say shameless. I've been a fanboy, but I've also worn my shame. I'm a I... bit of a Nintendo fanboy. I just kind of buy like. If a Switch 2 comes out, I'll get a Switch 2. <laughs> but, like, I I also... You feel shame, though. Yeah. I know you do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Like, I you, I think you could point at my love of Noctua and call that, like, fanboy or shameless or whatever. But, like, it's more of, like, a respect. It's, yeah. I respect their approach to product engineering um, at, at that... And that approach has led to my trust in them being well founded it's not like yeah. fanaticism it's just i feel like i either have that or i feel shame about it i don't necessarily <laughs> i think i'm pretty realistic with like yeah i don't know shameless fanboy i mean i um a bunch of people are saying evga yeah but no, like but he founded. just said it's founded i yeah. have direct experience with this so i don't know uh, okay Colbar Hammer. I don't think he's a fan. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't Intel think so. fanboy. No, see that that's the funny thing, man. I get accused of being a fanboy. That's a of weird one. Intel all that's the time. That's a really weird one. I literally was the teenager with the UV reactive green AMD inside circle logo sticker in my freaking case. Like I I, I grew up team green and only because they made the better processors at the time. First processor that I that was it purchased I, was AMD. So that's not even fan. That's just buying the good one that is a good one. <laughs> like it's just I, I don't know. I don't think that's the way either of us shop. So I don't. I think we're both in the same camp there. Yeah, I mean, like I lo okay. People are talking about LG. Like I love OLED love OLED displays and I will I will tolerate some of their problems for the benefits but that's not it's a tech that's a technology yeah, like that's I'm a, not a company I'm, I'm a fan of the performance I'm always a fan of performance yeah oh sorry people are like team green sorry AMD used to have a green logo blizzard not yeah, a chance not, not NVIDIA um I said team green for AMD AMD's team red now sorry about that sorry I have about repeatedly that. called blizzard CEO a rat yeah, I think you've called to... them a lot worse not on the WAN show. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> EA That's Sports? True. No. No. I think people are just pulling out uh, stuff they know is not true at this point. Uh, next question here from, I think, uh, Josu. Uh, for Linus, as a lifelong gamer and now toddler dad, I'm curious to know what your proudest gamer dad moment is. Oh, I mean, it was pretty fun having my eldest son, um, like, carry us in minecraft yeah that's pretty cool and yeah. uh, he can also hang with us in towerfall which is yeah surprising because he, he neither neither luke nor i are like crappy side scroller Slouches, players yeah yeah like we're yeah. not just like new old man never touched a controller when it comes to 2d side scrollers and he won some rounds like for real beat us so that's pretty cool um, and i could also feel 
the energy in the room change when he won his first round as Linus and I buckle down. Yeah, um, we were like, we may not allow that to happen. And he didn't win again for a bit. Yeah. But then he did win again. Yeah, he did. So. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's been, I guess it's just been good. It's it's less like proud. I'm not proud of kids for like enjoying video games. They're, it's, it's like being proud of them for getting addicted to crack. Like they're designed <laughs> to... They're, they're they're designed to be addictive. For... Yeah, you like the addictive thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? But I'm definitely I'm definitely uh, you know, I enjoy playing with them. It's fun. I'm glad also, that we can connect over that. I'm sure watching uh watching your kids be adaptive and be fairly naturally skillful sure, things is solving cool. problems. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Minecraft is a good game to enjoy if you're a game enjoyer. Yes. Love that game. I they they are allowed to play my Minecraft mostly when they want to. So that's um well, within their daily like screen time limits cuz that's the thing yeah. parents do now. Yeah. Um so next question one from Joshua B. And I've noticed a few questions about this. Uh yeah. they asked, you've mentioned to make plans for a tech bag, uh plans to make a tech bag for the backpack. Have you thought about making something into akin to like camera focus? I think there's just been a few questions on the direction of like another bag. Yes. We have talked about doing a camera focused insert for the backpack, but I think that right now it's a lower priority than the tech pouch, which is really designed for like all your accessories and like USB drives and maybe like, you know, pair of side cutters and like little things like that. And a smaller version of the backpack. And we just don't have the bandwidth to tackle a camera focused insert just yet. If we did, we'd want to make sure that it was something that was really adding a choice that's not already available. You pointed out that you don't necessarily want a full-on camera backpack, but you want to carry a camera sometimes. Well, I would like that insert to be able to come out and like be a sling or something like that. Like I'd want it to be cool. Um, and we just, we, we don't have the, we don't have the time right now to work on it. Uh, next question from Benjamin S. Uh, does LTT slash labs have any plans to create software? Oh, question moved on me. Create software slash tools uh, that take a deep dive into the difference in performance between hardware. Um, in my opinion, it would be valuable to see an in-house benchmark uh, that we can measure performance between different types of tasks. We're already working on stuff. Right now, we're we're creating uh, like hooks for, or um, crap, what are they called? Harnesses. Harnesses for a, for a system that integrates other benchmarks, but we have talked about how we could do our own, different ways of doing our own. Uh, but right now, it's it's all about harnesses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have... Oh. Is the second... Is the, 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 the person signed? Oh. Uh, yeah, actually. Okay. I guess that was going to be in the meeting, but yeah. Totally. Okay. We now have not one, but two people who have deep experience in machine vision. Um, and machine vision is going to be really, really important going forward as it becomes more and more difficult to objectively, empirically measure the performance of a GPU just by FPS alone. Uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic image quality is becoming critical to being able to run games at all. Um, so whether it's through upscaling technology or dynamically changing uh, like texture quality or whatever else it is. And that's going to be a huge focus for us is building out benchmarks. It's already a thing in mobile, right? Building out benchmarks that can monitor changes in image quality alongside changes in frame rate so that we can better evaluate the relative performance of different hardware. Uh, Squid says, hey, L oh, hey, LTT, uh, please make a 40 ounce with a handle. It might need one. Uh, other so, than that, there's a question for Linus, especially I, because of all the things he said on LTT before. What's your favorite pony? Really important one here. Oh, favorite pony. Um, Can't really see it so well. I can use my face as a background and then you can see it better. But right there, there is a handle. It's part of the, it's part of the lid. Yeah, I'd say I'm an Applejack boy. Cereal? Oh, you're... Oh, okay. I was like, did I miss a topic or something? Like, what, what just happened? Okay, I get it. Sure. 
Uh, Charles says, I've seen so many tech channels have some bizarre issue that was caused by a bad PCIe riser cable. I myself also had issues with one. What can a shopper look for in a riser cable to avoid headaches? What a great question for the lab. Uh, all you can look for is like if you trust the brand to send you a new one if you get a bad one. That's all I can really tell you. Okay, Chase, I think we figured something out. What? I think you and I have been fighting each other the entire oh, show. I <laughs> Okay, I think I, I kind of noticed that part way through. I think I keep putting incoming into pending, and then you keep moving out. And I'm like, did I read that one already? <laughs> yeah. I think we've done that with the same message like a lot of times. Okay, okay. We know now. Good. No, it's okay. You boys all right? Yeah. Well, I, I'm not going to bother explaining it, but yeah. <laughs> David okay. N asks, uh, I'm getting back into badminton after a long break. Any recommendations for quality rackets around 50 US dollars? Get a used one. As long as you get something that's not a steel or aluminum frame, as long as it's actually like a, a carbon style frame. Uh, if it's been a long time, just, yeah, don't spend a ton of money, right? Get strings. Spend $30 and pay 20 bucks to get new strings on it grab a grip for a few bucks. That's going to be more important than the racket. As long as you don't get a steel or aluminum frame, that's going to really, really hurt your game. Uh, speaking of badminton, if there's any local coaches in the Vancouver area that are looking to pick up some shifts, I don't know, DM me on the forum or something like that because um, oh, I know some I know some people who want to get some badminton coaching including him. Um, yeah. and it would be it would be cool if we could uh, if we could find someone who wants to do that. All right. Uh, Arthur says, I have a weird question for Luke. What? Oh. Are the invoice numbers for float plane sequential? Oh, I saw this earlier. Uh, I actually think maybe. So they have invoice 45. And I thought that, that was pretty cool. Uh, if you have invoice 45, all I'll say is that was really early. <laughs> I think at some point in time, we might have realized it was sequential and then wanted to stop doing that. Yeah, because so that's pretty bad yeah so i think we changed it eventually but having 45 probably means that was actually the 45th um and then yeah i think we changed it down the line that's pretty cool kira asks any update on the stealth desk pad and what do you think is the most technologically ex oh, what do you think is most technologically exciting for data science in the coming years oh i mean i don't think other than you know just the the leaps and bounds with which machine learning is advancing right now. I don't think there's anything uh, past that horizon that I'm looking to at the moment. As for Stealth Deskpad, it'll come when it comes. I, I We're actually sending out a message to Wave 1 backpack purchasers that our shipment, which was supposed to arrive in... Uh, we gave ourselves three weeks from when all backpacks for each wave were supposed to be here to when we would have them shipped out. And wave one is supposed to be shipped out by September 20th. Two thirds of our wave one backpacks are not here yet and will not be here by the 20th. So they are over oh. three weeks late. So we're sending out a message to everyone saying, hey, here's all the information we have. This is where we started. Um, this is where they're estimating right now. It could slip again. There's nothing we can do to control this. We are just helpless leaves being blown around by the wind at this point. Uh, Sam D asks, love the show. Who are your favorite musicians? I mean, you know, love me some some Backstreet Boys. Uh, just love the Bare Naked Ladies a lot. Honestly, I don't really like fan out over individual musicians so much. Yeah. So it's just kind of, it's going to, kind of depend on who happens to make a lot of songs I like. Uh, you know, always down to listen to some T-Swift. Yeah, let me, let me, let me I see. I don't know. Luke's super into sea shanties. I know that. Got into his car and... <laughs> like. Well, it, it auto-played... Okay, so my birds really, really like music that is mostly just people singing. Um, so if you want to accomplish that, sea shanties are pretty good. And when I figured that out, because my, my previous bird did not he was not into that he liked he liked uh other stuff um but they they seemed to like this so i i played them the assassin's creed 4 sea shanties thing and then they've just been like obsessed with it ever since <laughs> if i ever want to make them calm down i just play that playlist and they're immediately like oh everything's okay now they like it's 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 amazing um but no i've been listening to um 
mostly odd future and the chats cool actually very on on two very different spectrums but i've been i've been an enjoyer of those lately but i feel the same way it's just kind of like whatever i'm listening to at the time i don't necessarily follow anything too too closely garrett b have you looked at working with sliger on a rack mount pc case like the one in your house yes oh. i will confirm that uh we haven't really made any progress at this point they are working on some really cool rack mount gaming cases right now though that honestly could just make it so that i don't bother doing one because they seem pretty good seem like they will serve that need pretty darn well in fact i think we have review samples inbound slager is a cool company do you want to read some chase are you caught up yeah we should be good uh Let's see here uh, from next one from Brant B. Uh, Linus, as a father of two, three months and one and a half years old, how do you balance work life, family time, and your own personal time, projects, and passions? Luke, as a software developer, I struggle with imposter syndrome a lot. Have you dealt with that? If so, how do you combat it? This could be like an entire show. Um, sure could. I mean, prioritize. That That's the big one. Whatever's most important, do it first. It's It really is that simple a lot of the time too tired do it anyway that's how that's how you make sure you don't have regrets uh next question from zach k and i've, I've yeah, seen we'll this just ignore, we'll places. just ignore my section oh i'm so sorry Producer. i totally forgot <laughs> we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna fight with the potential and incoming and now we're gonna fight here too um no i i just next sparring match chase versus luke <laughs> i i think the with twig snapping <laughs> <laughs> i think with uh with computer science stuff you you spend all your time trying to deal with like bugs and solving problems and and fixing things that don't make any sense so that's going to happen it's just something you got to deal with um how you deal with it i don't know if you spend any amount of time listening to other developers you're going to hear that they're dealing with the same thing so just try to keep learning try yeah. to keep on top of it no you're not alone fine. yeah whatever uh Actual next question, no, Sorry. from Zach. No, it's my bad. It's around. my bad. Um, so any plans for different screwdriver colors? I think this has been answered on Twitter. I don't know if it was by you or Nick, but there I might would be some stuff. love to do other colors. I will say that so far, I haven't seen any ideas in public that we hadn't already had internally. Um, however, it's not as simple as just taking different plastic dye mixing it in with the Triax chips and shooting it. Because the dyes are also plastic, they can affect the shrinkage ratio of the finished parts, which can affect the fit and finish and can affect the durability of the finished driver. So every single color will need to be validated individually and with each other in order for us to do different colorways of the driver. Right now, our focus is on shipping out the 80 plus thousand drivers that people have ordered. And once we are well on our way, we will think about, we will look at the R&D that is necessary for doing additional colors. I wish it was as easy as that because we would have launched with like a dozen colors. I mean, look at what we do with water bottles where it really is as simple as just putting different ink on the side of the bottle. Yeah, <laughs> heck yeah, let's go. Unfortunately, not when it comes easy. to plastics, it's just not that simple. And it's hard to like test things over long periods of time. What what does someone's hand oils do over the course of two years? It's like, that's tough. <laughs> it's hard to figure out. All right, next question from Jackson D. Hey, Linus, I'll be a first dad soon. Any advice for raising a tech-savvy kid while not making them tech-dependent? Um, I mean, yeah, you got to lead by example, right? So they're going to be so curious about everything you do. The second you do something, they're going to want to do it. So uh, don't do anything in front of them that you wouldn't want them to do. And, um, and just, you know, be there to answer their questions. I mean, at the end of the day, they're going to, they're going to leave the nest at some point. They're going to make their own decisions, but just try and be a good example for as long as you have. It's the best I can really give you. Uh, next question, Drew E. I've been thinking about treating myself to a nice screwdriver, but my tech is underwater in rivers. I know it voids the warranty, but would the screwdriver survive being used underwater sometimes? I don't see why not. There's nothing about it that, um, like you'd get a little bit of rust on the bits for sure. That's, that's normal. What about with... the ratchet though? Uh, well, no, the ratchet is zinc and Delrin. 
if it's fresh water, so um did he say it's fresh water? Yeah, he said rivers. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah, I, I don't I don't know what kind of coverage you might get if you you know, tell us, hey, yeah, it's full of shmoo because I was in a river and shmoo grew. Uh, <laughs> but if you were to get it wet once in a while, I don't think that would necessarily be the end of the world. Yeah. Grease in the ratchet someone brought up. Uh, yeah, but the grease in the ratchet, again, it's fresh water. Um, it is not water-soluble grease. <laughs> don't know. Maybe it would move it around. Not sure. Yeah, shouldn't much. It's cold water, which is less likely to carry away grease. Yep. So it is not for that. Not for that. But it seems like it might do okay. But it might do okay. Yeah. Uh, next question from Jason. What are you guys more excited for, 4000 series or AMD 7000 series? Uh, and do you think that it will come, who, who will come out on top uh, in performance this gen? Uh, well, if it's ooh. anything like the trend. Yeah, it's going to be NVIDIA again. Then again, I don't know. I saw rumors that 7000 series is supposed to be like chiplet. That would be sweet. And oh. AMD chipleted Intel, and it's taken years for them to oh. come back from it. So I don't know. And AMD's drivers have apparently gotten a lot better. I mean, Their video encoding has apparently gotten a lot better. These are all things I need the lab to verify for me. But yeah. hey, could I put a Radeon GPU in my personal rig for the first time in like over 10 years? That'd be pretty sweet. I'm, pr I'm pretty be cool. down. I'm pretty down. Let's go. <laughs> Next question from Matthew S. Straw lit, lid win. I don't know. Okay. It's a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay, next question. Waiting for the big chungus, Linus. Uh, oh, waiting for the big being chungus. waiting for the big chungus, Linus. Do you have a timeline for your wire management products? And Luke, what is your favorite uh, product from the LTT store? Oh, uh, underwear. Yeah, fair enough. And the wire management products. No, I don't have a timeline for them yet. Next year, though. I not, not this year. I literally wear LTT underwear every single day. Me too. Yep. I'm always wearing at least some amount of merch. Nice. Um, next question from Anonymous. Linus, uh, what is your prediction on the availability and price of the 4,000 series cards at launch? I'm trying to see if it's uh, worth waiting or getting one now, a 3,000 series. It's impossible for me to know. I mean, we talked about this earlier in the show. NVIDIA doesn't even tell their board partners what the pricing of the cards is going to be. So I, 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 don't have a, I don't have a crystal ball. I, I just don't know. I'm sorry. David says, hey, Linus, do you know why power suppliers um, or power supply manufacturers don't have a standardization for cables? Um, Seasonic cables on an EV EVGA power supply. Uh, maybe a video showing uh, what would happen or explaining why no standard. Yeah, the reason that they don't have a standardization for cables is that in the early days, everyone was just doing their own thing, developing modular cabling systems internally and everyone took a slightly different approach and it's not been worth it to change and create incompatibility within their own product lines. So there's no standard. All right. Kyle J says, happy Friday. Uh, my brother Joey and I love discussing videos each week. Question for all of you. If time is allowed, is there uh, any new hobby that you would like to get into? I've been painting miniatures while watching WAN show and was wondering if something has caught your guys' eye recently. I know he wants to get into like iron working. Yeah. Um, I actually doing... like really do. My biggest problem right now is, is space and I'm, availability. I'm doing a jewelry making workshop with That's the wife. Cool. So we're going to make rings, which I thought was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, I actually did it back in high school, so it might be a bit of a refresher for me, but I don't think she's ever done it. My mom did a silversmithing thing back in the day, and she thought it was really cool. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah, I, I really want to get into blacksmithing. It's just, it's it's tough. Someone says join a makerspace. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. A lot of my time over the last little bit has been taken up um, by like trying to be less out of shape and stuff. Um and it's been feeling a lot better. I've been like sleeping way better and stuff mm. like that. So I'm going to continue focusing on that for a bit. But my next, um, one of my things, this is a weird little personal thing, but one of my things when I sort of decided I wasn't going to have kids was that I would have to keep doing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so like I took a course on learning how to weld 
Um, I went and got uh, certifications to go diving. I'm like, keep trying to do stuff like that. Right now I'm taking a temporary hiatus to get back into shape. And then my next plan is blacksmithing. Um, and so far I've really enjoyed everything that I've tried to do and I want to keep doing it. I'm excited. So I try to, I try to do one thing every year. That's kind of my deal. Uh, ALC 5440. What are you talking about? There's a comment in the float plane chat. Sorry. I'm super excited. I was concerned about the remake. Final Fantasy 7 and 6 are probably my two favorite games, but they killed it. Do you, oh, do you mean the Final Fantasy 7 remake was really good? I thought you were talking about like a Final Fantasy 6 remake and they killed it because like Final Fantasy 6, like, oh, love it. Anyway. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. All right. Uh, next super quick question from Joe H. Star Wars, Star Trek, or Stargate? Can I just say... I mean, honestly, I, I like the Star Trek reboots a lot better than anything that Lucasfilm has done since Lucas stopped being involved. And honestly, for a while before Lucas stopped being involved. I like the universe creation of Star Wars the most. Um, yeah, but a lot of it got like retconned anyway. But as far as what of it I, yeah but i just ignore that um headcanon's awesome uh but as far as what i have seen not becoming tainted stargate was legit i used to watch stargate all the time growing up because it was like one of the few shows that are the three channels that we had on tv would would actually show teal is a freaking boss and the fact that the 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 person that used to act uh the actor for teal does the voice acting for God of War, nice. which I used to hate the God of War games. I, I mean, I didn't hate them. I was not interested in the God of War games. And then the remake was amazing. And the new remake looks like it's going to be amazing. And it's cool that he's a part of it. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Firefly. Fire, too too yeah. soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too soon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's never going to be over it. It wasn't included in the three. <laughs> <laughs> Clayton asks, with the GPU market dropping back down to reasonable levels, would you recommend upgrading from a 1080 Ti, or do you feel it still holds up? 1080 Ti is beast. Yeah. We actually were going to do a video, like, how does the 1080 Ti hold up today? And then I think, like, Hardware Unboxed uploaded it, like, the day after no. we, we pitched it. And, oh, okay, well, they did a good job, so whatever. We won't do that video. Um, and it all depends on you. If Is it enough performance for you? Then do or don't upgrade, right? Like, I can't, I can't tell you what to do. Uh, Cyberblade42 wanted to get a Seasonic power supply based on all the praise you give them. However, Canada Computers has almost all models out of stock besides 1,000 watts, and I'm not a fan of Newegg. Any other brand recommendations? I mean, hey, EVGA could probably use the help at the moment, and they have very solid power supplies, so why don't you check out EVGA's offerings? Uh, Mark R, ever since I saw your old home office setup, I've been running my PC in another room. What method is best? KVM over IP? Mm. Uh, long cables, mm -hmm. Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. which is just long cables. So yeah, long, long cables, just go long, long, proper cables. In my humble opinion, uh, anonymous, do you have trouble attracting talent to work at LMG because of the Vancouver area's prohibitively expensive real estate prices? The thing he's doing, our internal minimum wage is so much higher than the bc minimum wage just because if we well not just because we actually go higher than what is absolutely necessary but partially because it would be impossible for our people to like live here and work here otherwise how would chase afford to live how could he eat and look at him he needs the food <laughs> I'm just gonna keep living in my mom's basement. So, are you still in your mom's? Basement? No, uh, I, I, I moved out and then I, I moved back. Oh, my God. oh, and then I'm moving again at some point. So it's it's all over the place. Oh Sometimes it do be like that. Yeah, um, yeah. I have straight up just flat faced had a lot of people tell me that like they would have considered moving local if we were basically anywhere other than where we are. Yep. Um, so. It is what it is. There's a lot of other benefits of BC. That's one of the reasons why the housing is so expensive. It's pretty cool to live here. But, yep, it, uh, hmm. If you want not a massive portion of your paychecks, pretty much no matter how much you make, going towards housing. Uh... I hope it improves. Um, it, there's a there's a dip that we're going through right now, and I hope it's a big one. Even yeah. And this is with 
being substantially invested in Vancouver real estate. I'm rooting for it. Let's see a crash. Yeah. Like I, I want everyone who works here to be able to afford a house. And honestly, the rate at which housing prices are increasing is greater than the rate at which our like revenues are increasing. Like it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's crazy. Depending on the class of, depending on the area you're looking at, depending on the class of of, of housing or class of building, rather, um, like it's it's absurd. There have been times when, yeah, we cannot actually grow fast enough to keep up with the rate of the rate of Vancouver property price increases. It's it's absurd. Uh, people who like LMG apartment building, like I said, I if, even if I couldn't even. Right, and besides, that's not the goal. The goal would be for people you don't to want company housing. Yeah, own their property. Yeah, exactly. So what do we start like paying people in food and board? No, that's really not how it works. <laughs> it was fun for a bit, though. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think it was. I think it was actually my I idea. Couldn't so afford I, anything. I else. don't. I don't think that counts. I don't think it counts if it's my idea. Uh, next. Question. I don't know if it was my idea. I think the law doesn't care whose idea it was. Yeah, that's probably fair. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, next question from <laughs> Lucas Jade. Did they talk about why Apple dropped NVIDIA? Uh, no, I actually had in that uh, in that video script that I talked about earlier, I had a list of times that NVIDIA was the asshole. Um, and I had that in there, but frankly, Apple and NVIDIA are both seemingly equally arrogant. And I suspect that that falling out was from both sides. But what happened was NVIDIA had their GPUs and a bunch of Apple MacBooks that uh, failed because the the bumps for the, for the BGA uh, GPUs cracked and loosened over time causing the the macbooks to fail and apple blamed nvidia nvidia blamed apple and i don't think they ever really settled it to the satisfaction of both of them and they have never worked again since worked together again since last curated message for the moment uh, anonymous says thanks for all the hard work ltt team uh, how has the model of pulling your user base on the forum for advertisement partners worked out so far um, well, we're not really pulling for advertising partners. It's more we're just getting community feedback to help us avoid any pitfalls that are going to make us look bad, right? Like we, we do our due diligence, but we can't, you know, we can't see everything. Like if a particular brand has terrible customer service in Europe, for example, that's not something we can easily evaluate. So it's really good for us to get feedback from our community. For those of you who don't know, on the LinusTechTips.com forum, there's a section where people can talk about our brand partners and uh, where we can pass that feedback along to our brand partners and help make sure that they are supporting our community properly so that our community will keep trusting the partners that we continue to work with because it's in everybody's best interest for you guys to be able to trust anyone who's partnered with us. Um, it makes our sponsor spots more valuable if our conversion is higher and our conversion will not be high if we just chill garbage that sucks. So, Another question from Brian R. Uh, all black screwdriver fan here. Uh, were you surprised by the breakdown of the screwdriver shaft choices? Yeah, I was a little surprised. I thought all black would be more popular than black and orange. Um, but black and orange ended up being being the winner. And I guess for like higher visibility. Uh, Jake called it like like many, many, many months, probably a year before we actually made it to release. Um I mean, I just I just liked the look of the all black one. I was like, oh, this looks sick. But he's like, how am I going to find it? I'm like, okay, all right, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never have trouble finding my screwdrivers in my back pocket. I mean, not the second. Now it's in my LTT backpack. Oh, wow. And it's sleeve. That's why he gets paid the big bucks. But then I also have an orange one right now. Um, so I don't know. Which matches the backpack. Well, <laughs> Get yeah. them both. Hey, yeah, LTT, let's go. LTTstore.com. And a new 64-ounce water bottle. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't fit in the backpack. I mean, it does, it does. but not in the Yeah, the not holder. in the predefined water bottle holder. Yeah. I think that's it for merch messages. Thank you for tuning into the WAN Show. We will see you again next week. Oh, right. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye! Oh, wait. Oh. oh. Tasted it. Oh. That works. That works. That's good. Oh, wow. The rest of the merch messages just kind of go there. That's cool. I don't think it's queued up. Yep. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. All right. Well, I've got one more that came in that I should just... I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll address this because I was actually going to talk about it. I just heard from... Uh, the show is brought to you by Keoxia, Squarespace, and Secret Lab. 
Uh, Joe N. asks, any other collabs coming up? And the answer is yes. I actually just heard from uh, Nico from Corridor Digital while we were live. He says, uh, just watch the final edit of Redacted video. Uh, your segment is excellent and an awesome moment in the middle of the video. So you can find me over on Corridor Digital sometime whenever they release that. Cool. I, I don't know when. Um, so I can archive that one. Oh my goodness, P guys! You got to stop! You got to stop sending! You got to stop sending merch messages in at the last second. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't look at these ones. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna end the show. Bye again.